to episode 161 of the Art School live streams. So, um, we have a lot of exciting art to check out today. Um, I'm really looking forward to it and uh, I hope that everybody's doing great. So, let's go through the introduction as usual to kind of, uh, you know, to let people know on YouTube that might be watching this months in the future um, what this is all about and uh, you know wh where they can find more if they're interested so um, these streams as you can see you know it's a, it's a pretty long video I we're just starting here but I'm expecting it's gonna be many hours like they usually are and uh, if, yeah if you're curious like what is this about why how are these people getting feedback like this and then how do you how can can I participate well you can find more information about the uh, about my art school program down in the description below essentially students that are on the art school program like the mentorship version of the art school program you get to attend every single weekend to these streams and submit uh, submit stuff to um for me to give feedback to or to or questions to answer or uh, exercises assignments um, personal art is pretty open so again link down in the description below the uh, the students here get to attend for an entire year uh every week and so we we, we get to follow students for a long period of time, which is which I found is is awesome. Um, I get to I get to to know you guys better. I get to um, yeah to to help kind of steer the ship for the longest periods. And um, so far, the results have been quite quite promising. Not promising. The students have been delivering. So I'm really really happy how this is all going. And uh, every day we see a ton of progress. It's super exciting. So let's go through what we have in terms of submissions today. Number uno. Let's see what you got. Sure. Um, I did have a great week. Hope you did too. So I kept on working on my creature and added some details on the skin and also gave it a background. I also tried to draw a human pose for study. As always, I appreciate to hear your opinion on these. I don't think I've ever mentioned my personal art goal. Aha. Yeah, so I uh, just want to improve my art, uh, my general art skills and level up. I'd like to draw for myself and I don't really see me working for a company with my art because I'm afraid it would kill all the fun and happiness that art is giving me and just the result uh, and just results in burns and burnouts and stress. Um, so if I have the chance, I'd love to take commissions or sell prints and make a bit of money as a freelance artist. But right now I don't plan to reach my goal, even though it's just a small one. Well, you say it's a small one, but I had the exact same goal when I was younger. Um, I never really thought that I would work in the game industry. You know, I kind of just like to, to draw the stuff in the in art books from, from video games. But uh, yeah, I didn't really know. Like uh, at first, up until people started asking, you know, hey, could you do some, uh, could you do, uh, could you, do you do commissions? Uh, I'll pay you. Huh? What? You want to pay me for my art? That's crazy but I accept and uh, and then it kind of you know kind of snowballed from there and so once that starts and like opportunities start to to come by a lot more often and it kind of it kind of snowballs and um, and you get just more and more and more opportunities if you keep it up and um, yeah it's super exciting so you don't certainly don't need to to take it any further than that you know it can just all be commissions and then you just you know your commissions maybe get a little more expensive with time as you get better um, and that's it. But uh, yeah, you could start to do like merch, it's like sell sell prints, that kind of stuff. And it, usually, from the majority of artists, like this is the start, like what you're mentioning here. And then it kind of evolves into something else. But it's a great goal, though. Um, definitely achievable. And like my answer, kind of, you know, I'll, yes, I'll comment on the art, but it's kind of related. Um, if you want to take commissions at some point, you know, start to think about it. Start to look at like what other people do. Um, how they advertise their commissions um, and I'm saying this because you could take commissions now uh, you're you're really good uh, and you know just like anything commissions they, they get better and better and better over time and so you can charge more and more and more uh, and like you don't start you know asking for a ton of money at the beginning but uh, yeah, like I would look into um, to how people advertise their commissions on Twitter, for example, like have a little menu of, of what you think would make sense. Um, yeah, again, looking at different different artists, their skill levels and like compared to yours, how much they're how much they're asking for their art or for their commissions. Yeah, and yeah, I would try it. You know, you are definitely on the right path to uh, to reach that goal. And 
Uh, let's take a look at this. Whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah, that's come a long way. Look at this guy. Yeah, sure. Getting your, your name out there is, is hard. You know, you just have to, <coughs> to be productive and to be consistent with it. But, uh, but this is kind of what this, this, this structure, this art school forces you to do, you know, like you're submitting something every week. That's great. You know, that's stuff that you could post on, that you can post online. Um, people love to see other artists level up and start, start someplace and then end up, you know, and, and more like keep getting better and better and better. Uh, it's, it's just a fun journey to follow. And so if people like, you know, like the kinds of stuff that you do, I'm sure a lot of people would, uh, would be interested in that. Um, yeah, so this this guy looks really good. Yeah, the feedback is gonna be like pretty pretty minimal for the the creature itself. So a little bit of shading still, you know, like uh, on top of the shoulders. Usually it's a little bit more like a shelf, uh, so the light would hit a little bit more directly compared to um, to like down here. So if I kind of simplify what that would look like on the side here, um, it's almost like you have the torso and the shoulders and like the the legs. Yeah, they kind of like that. And then you have the neck sticking out from here, going, and the head. Um, so if the light is coming from, from this way, from this direction, uh, it would hit that part here a little bit more directly. So that's kind of what I mean. Like the top of the shoulders, it would hit the head, of course, the back here that would be on top, and the front of the shoulders a little bit more than what you have here. So a little more like towards the front here. Just to make sure that you have kind of like that that shelf where the neck is kind of sticking out from. Not that shelf, more like a yeah, like an angled table. The face itself, the face looks a little bit flatter, maybe, than, than the rest of the body. Like all of this looks nice and 3D. Uh, yeah, even the tail here, the fur, also awesome job on the fur on this. Oh my god, that looks really good. I don't know why I didn't mention anything last time, but um, but the face, like this, the side of the jaw, especially, looks maybe a little, a little flat. And this stuff here, I think you could just bump up the, um, just the, the shading, just a little bit more. I feel a little bit more 3D. It's flat. I think it just looks like there's a little too much light in that in that region. Maybe, maybe same thing here, over the eyes. Like I love what you did with the details. They definitely pop a lot more. Um, there's a lot more to look at when we when we zoom in here. But yeah, maybe a little bit more, a little bit more shading in general, like around the face here too. Because right now it definitely feels more like a flat surface, and in reality, you know, it's a lot more. I don't know if you look at this from the front, what is it like? Uh, eyes, jaw on the side, something like that. It looks like a looks like a cartoon frog, but it's all like that that change of change of surface, uh, how the light behaves on that 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 surface as it as it changes, you know, the direction. Um, I think you could push that maybe a little bit more, especially like around the eyes here, like right under the eyebrows, maybe adding a little, adding a little bit more shadow, pushing the pushing the three D effect maybe a little bit a little bit more. Yeah, as far as the uh, the animal itself though. That looks really, really good. Now he's got a little friends, little froggy friends, and um, maybe one last thing about the backgrounds, real quick. Like this color is not not su super cute. It's um, I get what it is. You know, it's meant to be light, light from the sun. Usually, what that would do instead is um, kind of. Add a little bit more saturation to the leaves behind or to and to the, the surrounding colors rather than reduce the saturation. Like it, this is turning almost like a like a gray color versus here where you have a lot more saturation. Usually, well, maybe not, maybe not back here, but but here you do. Um, around the light, usually saturation comes through a little bit more. That's why at the night everything feels desaturated. So I feel like if you did the same thing here, add a little bit of a fuzziness, but with the overlay mode. And I'm gonna do it in the back here. But you know, if you did that instead, you see how that how that brightens up the leaves, but not necessarily change the. It doesn't make them gray. It just makes them a little bit more saturate, saturated than they were before. Before it was like this. 
pretty gray. Now a little bit more saturation, so a little bit more to the right. So I would do that for lights. It just tends to look look better, more lively, um, and more accurate. But other, other than that, I really love the environment. It works really well here. Uh, and quickly, quickly looking at this here. Um, maybe the perspective in the torso. This is a little, little off. I think that's probably the, the, the area that needs the most, the most attention now. Let's change the overlay here. So right now your torso is almost like uh, facing us directly. There's not much foreshortening going on. If this were a cylinder, it's, it's kind of like that, right? Uh, but in reality, the cylinder, and you can tell just by her, her top, how angled it is. It's a lot more, a lot more foreshortened at the bottom here. Curve is a lot, it's much more intense. And so it's as if you're looking at the cylinder, but from, from below. Um, and as, as a result, the, oh, this here is going to be a lot higher. And yeah, in general, just the foreshortening is going to be much more pronounced. So from this to that, oh yeah, just pay, pay closer attention to this one. And, but the rest is really nice. So let's move on. Who the hell are? What's up, Angelica? So I did a few figure drawing practice again. And last time at my very first feedback, I remember that you wanted to see my first day and latest results. So here it is. Practice for both digital and traditional, but <coughs> excuse me. Uh, but more often in traditional media since it's easier for me, since my hand calibration uh, is a bit uh, is a bit different between those two media. I also added my full figure drawing practice. What do you think? Let me know what I should improve. Also, is there any, any indicator whether one's ability is ready for the next lesson or the next term? It's different for everybody, right? So there's no like no clear, clear answer to that. But um, on average, you know, just make sure that you yeah, spend like a few weeks per terms, at least, unless it's really easy for you. Uh, like when it becomes when it switches from from something that might be a little bit overwhelming uh, to something that's that's really challenging to then something that's just like challenging but not not crazy hard. Uh, that's a good time to to move on no, normally. And if you move on too fast, then that becomes you know it becomes overwhelming for you. Like you're like oh this is way too much. Then you can go back. You probably move the head a little too a little too fast. I would I would look at it this way. <coughs> But since you're, you know, since you're in the streams here, you can also let me know what I think. Um, if you, if you should move on, or if you're ready or not, and that kind of stuff. I've been doing this with a lot of students. I'm happy to to help out as well. That's why you're here. All right. So uh, day one. It's not bad at all. That's good. We're starting with a good, uh, good foundation. I don't know, like I'd say, I'd say the two are pretty equivalent. You say you're maybe not as comfortable in uh, digital, but but your drawings seem to suggest otherwise. You can see the lines here. Oh no, that's the that's the pants. Um, like when drawing, when doing these uh, these types of studies, always make sure that uh, you try drawing the the character naked first, so that you. You get used to abstracting out information out of your references and only taking what you need at the, at the time. Uh, huge, massively important skill in art to be able to um, to observe better, and uh, this helps you do that. So, like looking at this here and kind of like filling up the gaps of what you can't see with uh, what you know, or if you don't know what what's underneath here, find references like other references to to supplement that. And then be able to kind of complete the puzzle. The first step should be uh, should be something that's a lot more like this, and then you kind of dress it up and and look more at the whole reference. But first, abstract it, just like you do with uh, with gesture drawing. Maybe that's what you did. I just don't see the steps, so I can't really tell. But yeah, these are really good. So uh, depending on your goal, I don't know if you mentioned it again. Like for new students, you might have to. <laughs> repeated a few times uh, I do my best but um but depending on your goal again like if characters are gonna be something that's 
that that you do a lot of usually that's kind of common for most people unless you hate doing characters which doesn't seem like it's your case but some people you know they want to just focus on environment or just focus on other stuff whatever uh, but this kind of stuff here you do you'll do all your life really gesture drawing is is like your um it's like cardio you know for somebody that works out you do that always you never stop it never goes away it's kind of something that you just keep doing until you die and uh so like from looking at this the only thing maybe that i would say is to try to do a few more that are um, like longer um time periods so like going to two minutes five minutes and see see how well you do but what you want to avoid you know with this this kind of stuff here uh, of course, paying close attention to, to proportions, that kind of stuff. It's pretty good here. Here, maybe not as maybe not as much. Like, this looks kind of like a kid. Uh, this one, too. Like, Columbus, maybe not as maybe not as long as the reference was. Like, that looks like a kid, too. Maybe it was in the reference. I don't know. Um, but pay close attention to proportions and to the extremities. Because, you know, the hands and the feet really add a lot to gesture. And some of these feel a little floaty. And, and you really want to to nail that, you know, as soon as as soon as possible. Really get good at making your characters feel grounded, and that's going to be in the feet most of the time if they're standing. But also in the hands, because the hands the continuation of the arm, and it really adds a lot of gesture. You know, if somebody's like this versus if somebody's like that, you know, that's a big difference in the gesture. Just by moving the wrist a little bit, by changing the the hands, you don't need to spend too much time on the hands and feet, of course, but uh, maybe a little bit more so that your um, your lines in here are a little uh, more on point. But yeah, overall, these are pretty good. So I don't know that I would say that that I would tell you to to move on to the next term just yet. Uh, I would love to see maybe a little bit more longer poses. See what you can do with those, but uh, but I'm not gonna stop you if you want to move move ahead either. So, anyways, keep practicing this stuff. Like I said, we practice this uh, forever, um, starting now. So, if you want to move on, explore what's what's in the next term. Please go ahead, um, but keep working on this too. <laughs> Coco, the problem with uh, le problème avec le français, surtout le français du Québec, c'est que les français de France, par exemple, comprennent absolument rien, parce qu'on parle trop en slang, donc euh, normalement, j'utilise pas trop. But yeah, there you go. Uh, <coughs> I just said that uh, usually I'm not going to speak too much in French, because uh, in French, because the because uh, because French people, like from France, they don't really understand Quebecers uh, from from Canada, because we use a ton of slang uh, and we. We kind of butcher the language to us, you know, we grew up in that environment and so everything to us makes a lot of sense, everything is super clear and we grew up with like French from France, uh, from cartoons that are, you know, dubbed in France at least back in my days and so I can understand, you know, French people from France perfectly fine but people from France, when they hear us speak, they're like, what? <laughs> huh? They really, they really have a hard time. I don't use it. I don't use it too much. I use it with my kids. That's about it. All right, Ron, you up. All right, so I finished the piece I submitted last week, and here's the final result. I would like to know what areas of art I should work and focus on next. Yes, sir. Oh, look at that. Look at those, look at those folds. Mm -mm. Man, that turned out great. I know you're done. Uh, still, I'll say just a little something here uh, before I go into what I would recommend that you focus on next. But um, but the contrast still is, is pretty intense. Like I love to look at art, and I recommend that you do the same too. Looking at art as a, as like just a thumbnail, because often that's what people will will see when they scroll online. Or uh, yeah, because most people will look at art on their phone. The majority of people on Instagram often. And so like if you're scrolling really fast, swipe, 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 the amount of information that you can take in when you're swiping is pretty, pretty minimal. Um, so in a sense, it's the equivalent of having like a really small image because that's about the amount of information that you'll be able to to catch, you know, as you're scrolling. So you want to make sure that you're able to, to communicate as much in that little amount of time, in that little thumbnail. And um, 
I get this, you know, at this size, it feels maybe a little bit more like a silhouette against a really light background. Like we can see some, some detail here on the chest. A little around the shoulder, but... I would definitely add more. So it could be more light from the sky, like more of that, that bluish, purple, purplish tint that, uh, that you already have. It's on a separate layer. I don't think it is, just looking at your brush strokes, but uh, if by any chance it is, uh, I would try to crank that up, maybe duplicate it. Um, or it could be just bounce lights also, that could be another one, like you have some already down here, right? Like the little bit of like warm, warm color under her sleeves. Uh, maybe if you add some more of that, that could help too. Light up this area here. I love those folds. Again, just so that we can appreciate those details and so that there's there's more to see when we scroll when we scroll really quickly. So contrast. It's, it's mostly it. Otherwise, otherwise, yeah, this looks this looks beautiful. Did a really good job here. Composition works a lot better now that you adjusted the sword. Uh, yeah, maybe maybe the sleeve here. And it's like minor detail. It's clearly nitpicking, but. Um, like the folds are maybe a little too, uh, too much like a pattern, you know, like they repeat a little too, uh, what's the word, a little uniform. I would introduce maybe a little bit more randomness in here, so maybe like get rid of two or three of them and kind of merge them together. Um, anyways, you say that uh, Peter is saying that robot looks 3D, because it probably is, right? You know, I think that's the 3D model. Maybe not. If it isn't, good job. <laughs> you got me fooled. So yeah, so for the future, for future pieces, um, what to work on? Contrast. Uh, making sure that, yeah, making sure that you make it a habit to zoom out a lot and, uh, and adjust your painting in consequence. Make sure that you can always read it as well when it's tiny and big um, like I've seen some of your other work where you had more colors so I don't think I don't think color is really really an issue for you um, it depends it kind of depends what uh, what you want you know out of uh, out of art um, I forgot if you if you ever told me, uh, <laughs> bad teacher, but um, like if you want to be doing like illustration work, for example, I would introduce maybe more characters in your painting so that you can have more emotions. Um, cause right now that's maybe something that's missing a little bit in this one, you know, like there's no, it's a cool technical piece. Um, but maybe not like an emotional one, like, uh, like a good illustration would be. Like if the character was doing something, for example, or trying to communicate with us by like doing a gesture, it's super cheesy, you know, but something like this, you know, like asking for something or reaching out, imagining that maybe we're, we're somebody else, uh, like the viewer is someone that she's trying to interact with, uh, maybe trying to, trying to push, trying to intimidate, trying to, trying, trying to approach, whatever, you know, it doesn't really matter. Um, but introducing a little bit more of that, that's usually like a really, really big, powerful thing that's, uh, that you can have in a painting having that that emotional connection this is already pretty good you know it's uh, it's fan art so people will will stop because of that and like oh i know what this is i know this character cool uh but uh, but pushing that even more so that when it's not fan art that it can still pull people in so yeah a little bit of uh, a little bit more like composition storytelling elements um maybe revisit that class <laughs> um, and then the lighting, 
I think uh, I think lighting would be another another one. I mean, I kind of mentioned at the beginning when when talking about the contrast, but but lighting here I think is definitely not bad. But uh, but if you know if it's this bright outside, probably you'd have a little bit more light here on the shoulders, uh, even if it's really dark fabric, you know. It's still fabric, and so that would probably be quite a lot brighter than that. Um, and just, yeah, and just looking at a lot more references for different kind of lighting situations, how different fabrics react to certain, to certain amount of lights, uh, when it's just a lot of light, when there's not that much light. So lighting and, uh, and storytelling, I think those would be important. And then, of course, uh, since you're focused on characters, making sure that you always practice anatomy, and uh and gesture drawing always trying to make uh to polish your your character drawing skills not to say that the anatomy is bad here it's pretty good it's just like we can't see much so yeah well that helps run let me know <clears throat> yeah like, ooh, what up I hope you had a great week. I worked on learning to draw hands this week. This, uh, the ones you see here, is the only one that turned out decently. The render is still very basic, and I have not yet added smaller details. Hands have always been my hardest, uh, my greatest enemy when it comes to drawing. So any advice would be highly appreciated. Well, good. Uh, I think that's a, uh, something that you have in common with most artists. <coughs> Me included. Um, hands are hard. It's one of the, the just most complex part of the body. You know, if you think of a like just a, a torso with two two arms, that's just like a hand with two fingers. And then at the end of that, you have another torso with five fingers. Uh, so very complex shape to just wrap your head around. So at the beginning, <laughs> everybody's hands look kind of wonky so i think the biggest like the biggest breakthrough for me uh, when it came to drawing hands was it has to do with observation but it's, it's how you get rid of a lot of those details because when you look at hands like what the hell am i looking at right now this folds everywhere like highlights and shadows fingers kind of bending in different direction there's like this area here is kind of square-ish but on top is kind of round which is it is it a sausage or a box and it, there's just a lot of stuff to take in. And so it's really important to be able to abstract all of that out, kind of just like get rid of all those details and, and really focus on the construction. So if you want to get real quick at this, really treat it like it's just a bunch of cylinders and uh, and that's it. Or or sausages, you know, whatever. Both can work, but it's, uh, it's the construction that will really make a big difference. Uh, when, when the construction makes sense, the details after that kind of just falls into place and um that was really really it for me so for the longest time you know i tried to try to kind of draw what i see uh and it's really when i started to remove those details and just focus on the basic shapes in there and that i started to click a lot more so if you want to be good at drawing hands you know what i'd recommend is to kind of ignore shading ignore uh ignore all of that stuff you know ignore the folds uh like the wrinkles in the skin out the window simplify that as much as you can so for example you know kind of like uh simplifying the the shape of the hand like the palm itself as like just like a simple box maybe and like i show i show a method you know that i think works pretty good in um in the program but there are different ways to simplify and you can find maybe something else that works better for you if that if that doesn't do it uh, like for example here you have the palm that's kind of like a box you're gonna have the joints here little balls you have the thumb muscle the thumb the thumb joint and then sausage for the joint but really this is just like two cylinders cylinder number one and then another one for the tip cylinder number two and so try to see that when you look at your references where are those cylinders where do they stop what's the angle of the cylinder is it like this 
is it more like that which is it and kind of figure out the, the different distances different proportions but really that's that's what it is and then drop all these different cylinders connect them all now different hands connect them all uh, different fingers Going really quick here direction different direction again and after that you can I mean this is starting to look like a complete mess but <coughs> when you clean this up I didn't have the pinky here I'll just I'll just swing it just clean up your cylinders essentially And then once you have the construction, then you can start to look at the uh, at those details, like how the folds behave, like how this overlaps, maybe like the, the part here, but still keeping it as simple as possible. So that overall, it's, it's still a very simple hand and, and practicing that kind of stuff for the most part. And when you get like pretty good at that, at simplifying, then much later you can start to add details. Um, not to say that you shouldn't do that now, but do that for the majority of the time because that's really where you're going to improve the most. Um, you're going to get a lot more for you, out of your practice. Mm. Yeah, I mean, the shading and part of this, like the thumb here, like this area is very nice. That area, very nice. <coughs> but these, like the fingers here, they look a little, a little flatter. Maybe like not, not cylindrical enough here to add a little bit more shadow but again like shading the fingers not that hard it's just they're cylinders really and so it's really the construction that's the most important when you can understand that since you can already shade a cylinder pretty well um shading the hell the the hand as a whole should be a lot simpler but that helps i am good hope you are good as well so here's my progress since i missed feedback last week i finally got the basic of a background going to add a mountain and a blank landscape and more details around the balcony. So what I've struggled with is shading and got a lot of help from the Discord gang. Here's a small study that I've been doing on the side to further my knowledge of how shading works against the skin. I'm not quite finished with it, but I wanted to show my progress. Any tips on filling backgrounds with objects to add to the scene? So the only thing I'll say here with, uh, it looks really cool. It's a nice scene. Very dramatic. Um, two things. One with uh, lighting. Other one with composition. So I think those are the main two um, uh, two components of the image that I think would improve the most. Love the metal here. That looks good. Nice job. Uh, first, I think, is the contrast level. Lighting. Uh, having to do with lighting, contrast, whatever. Kind of both. So there's a lot of light in the scene, clearly, like these characters, the skin of the character, the hair, it's pretty bright. You know, if you take like a, a person with white hair and you place them in an environment that doesn't have that much light, their hair is not going to look white. It'll look like, uh, you know, medium gray, something like that. And so when it goes to full white, it implies that there's a lot of light. Same thing with the chest here, it implies there's a lot of light. And uh, when there's light, the more light there is, the more chance that it has to or the, the more particles there are to bounce around in the scene and generate bounce light. So if you don't want too much bounce light, then reduce your, your highlights, you know, so that they're they're not that bright. In that case, then it'll, it'll, it'll make a little bit more sense. For example, if it were... Uh, like if the overall values are more like this, then I wouldn't, I wouldn't complain about, about the, the shadows in here. Cause it's more in line with the overall amount of light in the scene. That, that makes that makes more sense. But like this, the shadows here are a lot, a lot. Uh, no, that makes no sense either. The the shadows are too dark, not a lot too dark. That's not that's not a thing. Um, but for sure, the light would bounce in here, coming in, boing boing, boing 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 boing, and then land up 
end up on that wall, maybe end up on the arm, maybe end up on the side of the body here. That would be some light that make it. Makes it. <clears throat> so number one, that would be it. Uh, adding some bounce light here. Whatever the color that you want to use, that really doesn't doesn't matter. You know, it could bounce off of the ground. Uh, maybe there's like a fountain here that we can see it's off off you know, off canvas, and uh, the light is bouncing on the water, and then back on her. <laughs> nice chest here. Uh, and then yeah, and then that would illuminate kind of like uh, the silhouette here and the shadow a lot more, and just reveal more of that information. Same thing here, maybe on the on the wall. Some of these leaves might be. Are these leaves? Yeah, it's all leaves. Some of these leaves might be might be catching some of that light as well. So that would be number one, like adjusting the contrast by introducing more bounce light. Same thing on her hair, like this gets really really dark. Uh, again, bounce light. You know, you would probably have a little bit of it on her hair, even just from the sky here. It's not completely dark out, so. There will be some light coming from above, lighting up her hair just a bit. Maybe here you can reduce the, the highlights on the hair. Suggest that there's not that much light. That's mostly coming from behind. Same thing on the skin here, reducing that a bit. But it would be kind of those, those two ways. So maybe reducing some of the highlights, introducing a little bit more bounce light so that you, you adjust the contrast. It's not too striking. It's not too great of a difference between the highlights and the shadows. So that's number one. And uh, number two, um, composition. It's not like you're saying that you're going to add something in the back here. Uh, that will definitely, definitely help. But it's usually not a great idea. It tends to look pretty strange when you have the, uh, the majority of the interests and the, in, uh, the majority of the emphasis in the piece in just one half of the painting, which is kind of the case right now. Like, you know, there's most of what's interesting in this on this side, and really not much on the other side. Uh, so you have number one, main actor, most visual weights. Number two, the girl, are the two girls, the two girls. Uh, and and then you know if you had a little mountain or even if you had like a, a huge castle in the back here uh, that might have some some amount of visual interest but compared to the main the two main actors not even not even close and so you would always have it an, um, an imbalance like that um, so what I would recommend is that you you crop the frame a little differently maybe you bring this in a bit more so that uh, instead of having maybe half of the, the environment that's on its own, it's more like a third. So they occupy two thirds of the image and then there's one third left for like, you know, yeah, the background, something like that. So if it were more like that, uh, that would work a lot better. And a bonus, you wouldn't have to paint as much stuff. <laughs> Um, but yeah, so I think a uh, mountain's good, a good call here that you, that you uh, mentioned. Mountains, uh, there's not a whole lot of light left. It's late at night, it seems like, so it'll be a little darker, a little bluer. But yeah, that's always nice to, um, you know, to kind of fill up the horizon. Coming from, coming from the side. You have these mountains here, like the side of these mountains, a little bit brighter, and the other side a little darker. Uh, and then clouds, always, always easy to fill up the sky. What else are you gonna add in the sky? A bunch of clouds, always an easy, easy thing to add. <laughs> I 
Oh no. Sammy's cat just spilled her drink. <coughs> So yeah, so that's uh, that's about it. Lighting, composition, and then in the back, mountains and clouds. Uh, textbook, but it works. Um, it's a little too much, a little too orange here. <clears throat> This way the frame is also not too wide because wide frames you know they're great for for environment shots where you want to see majority of the environment you know like imagine that you're looking outside a window you're not really going you're not going to be looking up and down too much you know usually it's a, you look along the horizon so you want to see more when it's a landscape painting um, but in this case that's not really what it is it's more of a like a more like a portrait shot a little bit of environment sure but, uh, but anyways in any case um, better to always to always uh leave less space for the environment more for the subject of the painting um and then this way yeah this way they're winning they have two-thirds of the, the the entire space they are the mvp and about this one here mm. but it's, it's funny because it's the opposite of the problem that you had for the, the painting itself not enough contrast in this case. So, you know, like it goes, I'm just color picking. Don't do that. But uh, just to show the difference, you can, you know, after you're done to auto correct yourself, you're like, oh yeah, that was a little darker, huh? Uh, so yeah, in this case, it's just a little bit more contrast. Maybe we can get the same by just adjusting the contrast overall. Maybe not. already a lot closer I mean now the color is all, all messed up but so yeah I think we were just made you were just a little timid on the contrast uh, but overall the shading the shading works you know if we if we crank up the contrast now it looks a lot more similar before, before. after uh, it's, it's warmer the colors that, that we end up with here but uh but the contrast works a lot better but i think that was mostly it just more contrast because your values were fine your shading looks good just not enough contrast oh that helps oh. we gone to coco <clears throat> <clears throat> happy to tell you that I started working on splash art for my original skin. I couldn't resist making a splash art for the skin, so I just wanted to keep improving my illustration skills and I also found that I wanted to be good at both concept art and illustration. They both make me happy in different ways. Sometimes a little deeper and sometimes a little deeper and the sun... <coughs> <coughs> The idea of the skin so that it can be more related to the League of Legends Shurima history. Here is the idea of the splash art. This is the Shurima Oasis located on the middle of the desert. The desert. And here's Nami, the guardian of the Shurima Oasis. In this scene, she summons a big tidal wave to defend the Oasis from intruders. And here's the, and here's the explanation. <clears throat> In the splash art, I wanted to give her a little more powerful and majestic look 
Not cute and girly as her other skins, but more mature and kind of looking like a strong female warrior. You can tell me if I did it. Also, if uh, is anything, also is everything right with her anatomy? Because for the first time, I didn't see any references. I was just drawing from my imagination. <gasps> then for sure, it's gonna be a bunch of problems without even looking. Don't do that. <clears throat> I'm super excited to finish this splash art. I'll make it super detailed and polished right on. So, um, drawing from imagination. Always a bad idea, uh, <laughs> unless unless you've been practicing anatomy and gesture drawing for for so many years that uh, that drawing from imagination, like an entire body for you, is just like no big deal, and you never make any mistakes. Until that's the case, like right now, you know, if I were to draw like a, if I were to ask you to draw a cube, I'm pretty sure you could draw them from draw one from imagination, right? Like this, like that, like that, boom, 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 boom. Oh, looks like a cube. Oh no, I messed up. That looks like a cube. You can do that from imagination. As long as you can do the same with anatomy, no problem. I won't, I won't, I won't mention anything. But uh, if you can't, which you can't, I would never try to draw that, to draw from imagination, always always use references um, otherwise you're kind of just wasting the um, the opportunity to learn something new and you can bet your you can bet your pants that I'll <laughs> I'll always tell you to, to look at a reference so <coughs> no reference no learning <clears throat> Doesn't look, she doesn't look horrible. She doesn't look that bad, but uh, but definitely some some anatomy issues. And you know when it's uh, <clears throat> when the, the centerpiece of the illustration is a character, you you don't want that. You want that to be flawless, and you want to allow yourself to miss to make mistakes on the stuff that is not as important, like the background, for example. That's going to be more of a like a secondary read for most people. But the emphasis of the painting, the character herself, it needs to be as tight as it gets. So use reference. There's no other way. There's no way around it. <clears throat> so you can probably find a reference for that or, you know, use yourself. Uh, I've done that many times in the past, like while working, uh, while at work or for my personal art, I would just take a photo of myself <laughs> and then use that as a reference. Perfect. You don't need more than that. Uh, or if you can find one that looks that is great online, then then that's good too. But it just it takes no time to take a reference, and it's just going to help you massively, massively more than trying to do it from imagination. Because <coughs> drawing something from imagination like this, I just want to just want to make my point so that you don't make this mistake again. But uh, Drawing from imagination is the same as a <coughs> as trying to uh, to bake to bake to bake bread without you know knowing what goes into a bread. If you have no idea of the ingredients, you know, if you just look at a bread before you tasted one and you're like, "All right, I'm gonna make something good now." Here we go. All right, what what ingredients go in this? Uh, salt. I'm gonna say oats, uh, milk, and how, and how much of each? I don't know. Probably your bread, your bread's gonna taste like poop. So, don't wing it. You know, look at recipes. Look at how it's done first. Learn it. Memorize it. Know it by heart. And when you know the recipe by heart, when you don't even have to open the the cooking book, uh, the cookbook, cooking book, cook cooking book, whatever, um, then you can you can. Do the same with your art. Don't need to look at reference if you know if you know it here. But until you do, mm -mm. see, so yeah, like this one here, for example. <clears throat> now she's facing kind of that way. So if that's her rib cage. <coughs> Hmm. 
if that's a ribcage like this, pointing in that direction, um, that shoulder would be behind the the volume of the ribcage. This one here would be in front, so a little closer probably. That one behind, and then the, the arm cylinder would be coming slightly differently from here. Uh, the arm could be could be bent a little bit. That would be probably a little more natural. Um, and then the hand probably facing us more directly. That one here, the bicep going into the into the forearm, and how that would be holding the holding the staff would probably be a little a little different as well. Uh, kind of like more like this rather than just kind of being on the same line. And more foreshortening for sure. You know, you can look at my own hands. My hand looks massive right now compared to my face. Ah, ah. In reality, it's not, but it's just the foreshortening makes it different, uh, makes it seem different. Um, and how that would go into the into the hips uh, also would, um, would would probably slightly, probably be slightly different than that, and that would influence how these details <coughs> are drawn. Because um, right now they're not quite following the the right perspective, because her from this angle her her crotch would be pointing down, pointing towards the water, and so if this is on her on the same kind of plane, then that also would be facing down. So that little square here would be angled down instead, and these would yeah probably be different uh, as a result. Um, so you didn't do you didn't do a horrible job, like I said. It's 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 nice, you know, it's pretty good. But um But there's also a lot a lot of mistakes. And so you wanna make sure that you don't don't do that when you can avoid it. Use reference. <clears throat> Same thing with her staff, you know. Use a reference for that as well. Uh, you probably have a lot more force running here going on. Staff coming like really, really close. It's right in our face. If it's a long staff, it would reach a lot closer to the camera. Uh, and from this angle also, just looking at her head right now, like the, the neck, the way that it connects, it wouldn't quite work. Like she would need to be like, you can imagine she's slightly rotated this way and rotating, looking at us straight like this. It's just... It feels weird, no? Um, so you would probably need to adjust the perspective of her, of her head a little bit so that she's maybe not facing us directly, but maybe more like, you know, she could be rotating her head, but maybe not as much. And uh, yeah, that would kind of shift her facial features to the to her right. I like the idea though, like the the composition right now. That looks pretty, pretty, pretty damn cool. Um, now be careful to add some add something in here so that's you know you don't have kind of like this void there. Um, excuse me. It could be. Uh, is this like a splash of water? Is that what it is? Like a wave? Yeah. Okay. Uh, Someone's a tidal wave. There we go. Uh, Yeah, so I don't know exactly what you could have here. Maybe it's just like a big rock formation or something. But just to fill the to fill the the void that you have here in your composition. But otherwise, it just looks nice. Like nice framing. And the stomach. The stomach right now it looks skinny because because yeah the the volume is a little 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 weird. Um, so if we erase some of this here. Somewhere around here, uh, her abs would be something like that. And now it's just a matter of like shading this properly. And here you have the, the rib cage going like that. Everything below the ribcage usually is a little 
a little more like sunken in. Um, have a little bit more shadow there. But it's, it's mostly like the uh, figuring out like this line here, like where the belly button is, where the, the the center of her body is in that particular angle. Again, you know, when you find a reference, you'll you just need to follow the reference. So that won't be too much of an issue. But um... yeah, cool. Oh, that helps. Uh... <clears throat> Like this stuff is, it's a good exercise, you know, to try and do it on your own, but don't plan a big painting around that. You know, this is, it's a good test of your abilities. It's great to highlight your flaws, essentially your shortcomings. Because then you, well, as, as you're drawing it, like you're probably gonna, <coughs> excuse me, you're probably gonna have a bunch of questions. Like as you're drawing, like maybe the rib cage, the shoulders be like, is that really how it is? Mm. Like whenever that happens, you're like, uh, mental note, make sure that's the case next time I look at a reference or make sure that I observe that better next time. Then you draw the belly button, eh, is that in the right spot? Make sure that you look at that next time as well. And uh, so it's not a useless exercise, it's great to, to highlight problem areas. Um, but when making like a full splash art, even as a professional artist, you'll use references for that. And so you should use it too as somebody, as somebody that's, that's learning to do that. Most definitely. What the hell's? <coughs> Aria, what's up? So, I uh, hope oh, everyone has it. <laughs> Thank you. Um, yeah, no, unfortunately, the damn cough is still. It's still there. Still uninvited. But, uh, but my shitty immune system, I think it's making a little bit of progress. <clears throat> so I continued on the last piece and worked. <coughs> and worked uh, with your feedback. I do struggle with the drawing. I do struggle with drawing the grid to calculate the placements of the important subjects in my drawing. Um, it's some date I cleaned up the whole sets and the ferry to start building the drawing on. I want to know if you have any special receipts for drawing mountains and big rocks because with the previous mermaid drawings, uh, per previous mermaid drawing a little while back, I was drawing it for way too long. <clears throat> I know there must be a better way to do it, but I found a way, but I have not found a way to hack it for myself so far. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Sorry, I don't <laughs> <coughs> All right, well, <clears throat> the grid in here, pretty simple, because your scene is pretty simple, so that's good. Uh, yeah, usually, you know, if you if you start something like this, and if you know that you're gonna have, <clears throat> you have a you're gonna have a little bit of perspective, start with just like a simple, simple scene. It's just a bunch of simple objects. So start with your your horizon will be maybe somewhere around here. Moon. And then uh, if all of this is water, then good. Maybe she's she's here on her island. And uh, and then on top, blocking the horizon, you're gonna have you can have whatever you want. You know, it could be a tall building that blocks everything, or it could be like the rocks that you have here. And uh, if they're closer, you know, they're probably not that far. These rocks, they're not at the horizon, so they're gonna be slightly lower than that. The lower they are, the closer they'll appear. Um, you just want to make sure that they're not too close to her if you want to have some distance between her and the rocks. So anyways. <clears throat> Those rocks here, boom, boom, boom. And uh, yeah, now you have kind of a, an idea of, of, of where things are. And then if you want to draw her properly, you can draw that grid. So let's say the, the vanishing point is here. It can be anywhere, to be honest. It can be back here, in front here, but usually you'll be... I say usually, but I don't know. For something like this, probably good. Probably be good if it's in front of the character. 
so that you have kind of everything going to a point. And uh, she's not going to be too much in perspective because if she were, if the uh, if the vanishing point was like right behind her, for example. Doesn't make any, and here in this case, it doesn't really make much of a difference. But you can imagine if it were like a street, like everything is going towards, eh, maybe that would work. Either way, scratch that, it's not important. Um, <clears throat> So you can place it wherever you want, basically. But uh, let's say we have the moon here. That seems like a good spot. Let's line it. Let's line it up with that. And so, yeah. So if you wanted to draw like position of her knees, the position of her shoulders, it's arbitrary. It could, it could be anywhere. This, like I said, doesn't really matter. Um, but you could do that here, and then that gives you kind of like an idea of how to line up everything. So let's say you have some rocks that you want. Uh, to be coming towards towards her maybe a little bit more so different layers of rock so you have like the main layer back here if you want to have a layer that's a little closer then you can line it up with those let's say you have a tree that's uh, that's this tall in the distance and you know that if the tree is in here it'll be that tall so it's useful for that kind of stuff um, and for her like I said let's say you're you're drawing her and you want to make sure that her perspective is correct if she has a knee here and a knee there, where are her shoulders going to be in relation to that? Well, if she's like if she's this tall, for example, it's not the case here, but if she was, uh, then her shoulders would line up this way. And also it'd be kind of inverted that way. Um, so it's good for that. But it doesn't need to be more detailed than, than what I did here. So super quick, super simple. <clears throat> Yeah, that looks looks a lot better, composition wise. Again, like for uh, for her island, another that that's good. <coughs> another good reason to have like a, a small, small a simple construction of your scene um, before you kind of commit to any detail. Drink some water. Ooh. I'm gonna take a short break after this. <clears throat> Need to rest my, my throat for two seconds. Get me some honey tea. But yeah, so you know, you can imagine an island. Let's say the island is like round, like circular. Uh, what would a circle look like here? We could kind of figure out using that. So maybe something like that here. And then the center of that would be this. So you would know that your ellipse, your ellipse needs to touch these, these corners here. And so you would have kind of an idea of the, the outline of the island to make it seem round. Because the way it is right now, uh, it's this, but instead of being a circle that you're deforming into this kind of perspective, you end up with maybe something more like an oval that you place in perspective in that results in this kind of curve. Maybe that looks weird. Uh, so yeah, I don't know. Maybe I'll just curve it a little bit more like that. Might make it more of a natural, natural curve here for the island to go into the water. Uh, so composition wise, yeah, maybe just the island. Um, adjusting that slightly. Uh, but other than that, much, much better. And uh, yeah, to draw rocks and uh, what was the other one? Rocks and what? Mountains. And big rocks. Um, yeah, first of all, just treat it like super simple blocks. That's the biggest help. Uh, once again, kind of uh, reinforcing the the usefulness or the kind of making my point here how useful this is. So I'm treating those those rocks as simple cubes for now, and then you you kind of chip away at those cubes. But start with cubes. So you know maybe uh, one side of the cliff is this here. 
So using that perspective to kind of draw it roughly, imagine it's just a big box. Then you have another big box here, maybe like having a few of those. Another big box there. Uh, maybe another one like in between those two. Where the waterfall is going to be. And so you end up with something like that. And now you have already like a good idea of, of the shading, right? So if the moon is in, if the moon is right here, then that wall right there is going to be receiving some of the light of the moon. Maybe that's here a little bit as well. The top of the waterfall will, but anything that's facing the opposite way, like all of this facade here, probably not going to receive a whole lot of lights. Similarly, that side's not going to receive much either. And the front of the waterfall uh, probably won't receive much either. Um, and so, yeah, once you have kind of like those simple shapes blocked in, then you can start to, to chip away at it. So maybe you remove that corner here, jump, jump, and then that becomes a little bit more rounded, like a triangle. All right, maybe you're going to do uh, take out another part here. And just that corner. So now it's not it's not a box anymore, but it's uh, like a broken broken box. And then maybe you want to add some some smaller boxes in here that are a little closer. If the, the facade is not just straight down, maybe it's more like a like a stair. So maybe you're gonna have another another box here that's a little closer. Maybe another small one on top of that. And again, you chop them up. Where? Come on, black. Stop it. Chop, 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 chop. And then you can add like smaller details in between to kind of make the transition between those different boxes a little bit more seamless. <clears throat> that's kind of how you go about it. So that's exactly what I think about when I draw rocks. <clears throat> um, it helps to figure out how you're gonna light this all this whole thing up. It helps with perspective, making sure that it doesn't just read like a like a wall of rocks kind of stacked on top of one each other, but that there's actually like some depth to it as well. And, uh, and yeah, and then you make sure that it works with your scene. And from there, if it's like the colors, you know, colors you have here is pretty good. You know, you would do uh, maybe like for this this side here. I'm just gonna do one as an example. So like we said the top here is going to get a little bit more light from the moon. So that's going to be a little lighter. A little bit lighter if it's facing more directly. And then all the details that you have in here, you would treat them the same way. And uh, and, uh, and uh, on top of that, you can slap on some textures <clears throat> once you uh, but first actually start to break this up you know kind of like add some cracks in there kind of like it's before you chop it off you know kind of crack 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 remove some pieces here in between some holes add some, some breaks in the rocks I mean obviously like look at different rock structures depending on the, the type of cliffs that you want there's all sorts of rock formations and here it looks more like I don't know what it, I don't know what this is but uh, yeah and here you can have maybe a little bit of highlight some of these and then and then after that then you can move on and add some more texture once you're happy with the shape of things uh, and depending on the type of the level of detail that you want 
custom brushes can 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 do a lot of the job for you. That kind of stuff. Ooh. <clears throat> yeah, her face looks good. Really good. I'd say maybe like her her uh, right shoulder a little high. Uh, but it, uh, it depends of the of where your vanishing point is. So if it's a little higher, maybe that would work better. But right now, you know, if I were to trace a line here where the shoulders need to to line up with, it would be more like that instead. So maybe that's a little high. If that one's right here, the other one might be a little bit lower instead. That looks good. Maybe the knees here again could could line up with that a little bit more. Having her knee here, another one there. Um, you can do the same thing with the elbows. Seems like it's good. Uh, with her ears, with her eyes. Again, I just placed it here, but if it's higher, maybe that'll work better. Up to you. But based on this one here, maybe you'd want to adjust the, uh, the position, position of the eyes a little bit. One here, one there. Out here, um, yeah. no. <clears throat> love her facial expression, though. It's very nice. Before I completely ruined it. Very peaceful. Looks nice. It's cute. Nice hair. And that helps area. Um, so I'll take a uh, a quick break, like 15 minutes, something like that, and go and make myself some tea, some honey tea, and I'll be right back with with with, with uh, no with Aurora. Ooh characters to check out so I'll be right back mm, all right let's keep going I'm back make myself a lot of tea full of ginger and honey I think I probably put too much ginger man it tastes like ass <clears throat> but uh, hopefully it'll help um, yeah, <laughs> on that note, let's keep going with Aurora. So, what's up, Aurora? I hope that you're also doing well. There isn't much going on in terms of practice. I've been doing some simple practice and personal and personal work. Could you please give feedback on them? I tried applying everything that I learned about anatomy. I'm still not confident with faces and more intricate parts like fingers and feet. Any advice on how to feel more certain will? Uh, with my work. <coughs> uh. Her tail? Oh. Uh, oh yeah. Then whatever you haven't, whatever I did in red here, just make her tail. Make that her tail. Like it's sticking out of the water. Boom. Problem solved. You know, kind of like going in. Oops. And sticking out like this. Back to Aurora. Um, <clears throat> nice. So. Much, not much in terms of practice. Uh, seems like a good amount. Uh, that's a good haul for uh, for a week. Ooh, very nice. That looks really good. Maybe I'd adjust like the uh, like the perspective of the shoulders, maybe a little bit. You know, like looking at the uh, looking at the box here that she's sitting on, uh, the box or the chair, or whatever it is. Um, 
seems to kind of converge in this area here, suggesting that the uh, the horizon maybe is about around there. Uh, maybe I take it back. I feel like maybe if we were just like a little higher, I would feel more natural. Um, based on the position of our neck and the position the the position of the other arm, but that looks that looks really good. Um, the only thing I'll say here, other than that, is that the right leg feels a little short. Like you would probably want to have that coming out maybe a little bit more than that. Judging by the, the length of this one. but very nicely constructed. Um, this one here... Uh, <clears throat> I would probably drop that pattern. It makes it really, really hard to see. It just it completely flattens the image, and because the pattern is in no perspective whatsoever. So yeah, I would take that out. Um, it would work better, I think. That's just just a flat color, because um, it it really makes the the line art you know that you spend the most time on here hard to see. So always be careful with patterns. You know patterns. Uh, are pretty rare in nature. Rare nature by by uh, by definition is pretty chaotic. So when you see patterns, it's it's, it's exciting. It's like, oh, let's look at that. And uh, sometimes I can work against you, like in this case here. Figure looks cool though. Yeah, overall the proportions here were pretty pretty well. Maybe the maybe the shoulder the shoulder position. The shoulders uh, a little wide, like that one here. The right one seems fine. I don't know, that one right here. Red. That one seems okay, based on the position of the torso. But that one here feels just a little dislocated, like a little further out than it would probably normally be. Like around here, I think, would be better. So the bicep or the arm here would start a little lower. Small adjustment here, but otherwise this looks really good. Um, yeah, and when it comes to faces, uh, since that's your question, um, practice doing real faces, you know? Uh, that's the secret to, to stylize anything. You can't stylize if you have nothing to stylize. And so you need to first really understand how like if you can draw the, the exact volume of a face from the side or from, from this angle here, like a eyeball here, another eyeball there, and the socket of the skeleton. And where the, where the mandible would be here, zygomatic bone. Lower jaw. And then once you understand this and like this makes sense, like you can kind of see like through the skin. Maybe not like the whole skeleton, but at least you know how, how everything is laid out, how like the nose is gonna be in front of all that. Sticking out from here. Wow. <laughs> it's a horrible nose, but uh and then how the nostrils will be here, probably facing, like pointing down so we won't see it. How the mouth will kind of follow the contour here of the face. Uh, how the eyes will be maybe like the right one here, how it will be uh, more pushed in so that it doesn't touch the side here of the, um, uh, of the eye socket from this particular angle. How the eyebrows go around that. I mean, your eyebrows pretty good. But uh, it's all this stuff, and so yeah, just look at this like really, really quickly. I mean, this looks horrible, it's a hor horrifying image. But uh, your eye here on the inside, probably a little, little too close to the center of the face. You'd want to probably push that out 
a bit and have it wrap around the eyeball properly. Same thing with that one here. And then you can add the eyelashes, no problem. And then the upper eyelid, lower eyelid. And it's that, that stuff, that's super important, like the structure of the face and really understanding the different volumes in here. There's a lot of stuff going on, it's pretty complex. And so study from study from real real faces. Make sure you understand that and then after that to simplify it, piece of cake. Uh, you'll see it's a lot easier. You'll be, you, it's just a matter of removing some details, adjusting some things to just make it look how you want it to look, but it'll be based in a solid understanding of those fundamentals. Because yeah, the rest here, that, that's good. The rest of the body looks nice. Uh, be careful about the the levels of contrast too. No, no, that's important. Kind of going with this here. Here, the, the pattern kind of destroys all kinds of contrast. It just, it makes it very, very hard to see anything as a result. And then here, the black is a little too contrasty with just the pure line arts uh, that you have elsewhere. And so those birds is just like, that's the, that attracts a little too much attention. That's this um, distracting a little bit. So if it were just the highlights of those, not the highlights, excuse me, the, uh, the outline, that wouldn't be much of a problem as a result. Uh, so just trying to try, try to keep it consistent just for presentation's sake. Um, yeah, for your face, I mean, your face doesn't didn't look bad. You know, it's just. Uh, the structure was just a little off and that's usually as a result of not completely understanding the the the, the what makes a face work Let me go back in time here so we had another layer for this big mistake So going back and forth this way, you know, her right eye is a little too high. The left eye is a little too long this way. I mean, the right one too. Uh, position of the nose. And it's not quite in the center of her face. It's a little bit more offset towards the, the right eye. How that lines up with the mouth too. Like those are the kinds of things that you could, you could choose to do by uh, just for the style of it. But... Uh, yeah, like the contour of the the jaw here, that could be that could be better. Could be more feminine. Could work with the. It could work better. So, anyways, real life study. That would be that would be the secret here. Gonna help a lot, and when it comes to the feet, is that something else that you were mentioning? Like something that's that's uh, that's helpful to me is to draw kind of like the um, the point of contact with the with the ground. That's what I do in most of my constructions when I draw when I draw characters that have visible feet. And so, like imagining that the heel is just like just like a disc, and how that lands on the floor. So it feels like it's a lot easier. Like you can imagine kind of like your grid here for your for your environment, and uh, you know what that disc laying on the floor might look like. So if you had like a, a bigger one, it might look something like uh, this in this environment. Let's do that. Let's do this one. Based on this grid. <laughs> Trouble with my ellipses. There you go. Something like that might might seem like it's flat on the ground for, for this kind of grid. Um, and so it would be a tiny version of that. And that would be where the heel is or where the, the front of the foot is, right? So it's the same, same circle, but smaller. And that would really ground it along this ground plane. And then maybe the heel is in a slightly different angle. You can represent that by an ellipse that's, you know, tilted as a result. This one in the back is a little, little trickier, not as relevant maybe. But, uh, but this one here makes a big difference. You know? so now you have the foot that's planted, the, the toes are planted on the ground. And now the heel's kind of in the air. Feels like she's touching the ground a lot more. So doing that whenever you can. 
can do the same thing with the imagining the, the cylinder of the leg touching the ground, you know, the, the part that touches the ground, that's the same idea. It's kind of like a, that's the cap of the cylinder, right? So that, that one right here, how that connects, how that touches here before going up, making sure that's grounded, making sure that's in the right angle. Uh, 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 uh. I mean, your body's pretty good. Your body's look, you look, uh, look pretty nice. For the feet, um, I mean, different ways to simplify the feet. Again, I, I show one one way in uh, in the program. Um, I think we can deconstruct this one here. It's the leg going to the foot. Now you gotta get the heel. On the side here, you get kind of the body of the foot, and then you get the tip where the fingers are going to be or in this case, the toes. And you can kind of simplify it this way for, for different angles with foreshortening. And those shapes are pretty simple to um, to imagine in uh, in 3D. They're just, again, boxes. This is a flat box. That one here is just like a box that kind of chopped in half here, like a slight slope, like a big box. That chopped this way, chop. Up. And then the tip a little wider. And then on the heel. It's all about the constructing and kind of finding a recipe that that helps you. Something that's easier for you to draw. But um, but I would try that. Like these uh, these ellipses on the ground, that's been helping me a lot. Um, same thing here. I mean, this is like a <laughs> an animal leg, so it's a little different. But but still, you know, like the toes are would be behave the same way as human toes. They're trying to find what's the what's the perspective in this uh, in this. In this particular image, um, where's the horizon? At least figuring that out. So, is the horizon higher? Like, are we we higher than her, looking down, and so the horizon would be higher, or are we smaller, looking up at her? In this case, the horizon would be lower. Which one is it? That's going to impact how the feet land on the ground. Uh, but if it's higher, like this, for example, a grid just the same. Try to line up those ellipses to fit that grid. And so maybe those uh, those toes will be a little bit more curled as a result, because we would see the foot maybe a little bit more foreshortened. Um, yeah. What helps? Move it. Look at that. Oh, that's gingery. Oh my god. All right, Cassandra. I had a great week. Hope you did as well. I finally finished watching all of the anatomy videos. I drew some feet from reference and did my first full body construction from memory. Let me know what you think about them. Yay. <clears throat> oh, those turned out really good. Mm -mm. Very nice. Very, very nice. <coughs> yeah. Uh, I'm not going to have a whole lot to say. Maybe um, just small stuff, you know, like, a, like the perspective this is a little, a little different. Let's say between this one and that one. That one feels a little bit less foreshortened, like we see it a little bit more from, from above. This one here, we see it a little bit more head on, like it's closer to eye level. Not a big difference, and it, in both cases, it still look good. Uh... Yeah, 
Very nice. So just it's gonna be just in like the uh, you know the the angle of the toes here. Like the line is just gonna be a little bit more tilted since it's going towards the back of the foot. These ones here suggest that the back of the foot is a little higher, which it is in this case. Uh, but that's what changes the perspective slightly. The, uh, the position of the nail as well. So if the nail is a little bit more on the top, it feels like we're looking at the toe a little bit more head on. In this case though, you would probably have to flatten it. Flatten this whole thing here. To make that work. curve here again a little flatter than yours before it goes up just a slight perspective adjust adjustment uh, But the structure is there, so we did a really, really good job with these. Uh, yeah, I think in all, all of these, no, actually, no, just those two in the middle. It's like the tip of the foot here. It's a little, little flatter. Like there's less mass, right? You can see here, a little flatter than here. Or it tends to be a little, little, um, little thick. You can flatten this how this this out here before before it curves up. Because uh, in this area, like the tip of the toe, uh, the, the the tip of the foot, like this this region here is pretty flat. It's just it's just bones and tendons. Uh, the don't there's no big bones in there. Like the big bones are in here. Uh, so this is a lot more like a pancake than the rest of the foot. So just keep that in mind. You know, same same here, making that a little flatter before it, <coughs> before it goes up into the like the body of the foot. Like something that helps also is uh, to kind of draw like the, the whole joint. You don't, you can erase it later, but uh, but it, it forces you to, to kind of see always through your drawing where the where the joints are. Kind of like drawing the uh, like this the circles for the the knuckles of the hand. Like when you go like this, circle, circle, circle. It helps you visualize them in in different angles a little better, I think. It's like drawing where that joint is, in the first section. Not that that would require any change here. Just I feel like it helps me uh, overall to just get a better understanding of the structure as you draw it from different angles. So just recommendation. Yeah, these feet, uh, these feet look great. They're a really, really good job. And this from Imagination. Ooh, that's pretty good too. Look at that. Good proportions. Good. Uh, Good placement from for the majority of these muscle groups. Uh, everything is there. That's a huge chunk of knowledge to be able to place those muscle groups in the right spot and just to remember them in the first place. So I'm really, really happy with this. I hope you are too. Uh, that's impressive. Yeah, even like the perspective on, on these uh, on these groups of muscles is, is pretty on point. Yeah, imagine like this guy's got feet that are this good. Mm, that, would, that would be a nice figure. Yeah, honestly, I don't have much uh, much else to say about this really, really good job. Uh, of course, you know, it, it's not perfect. It'll never be. And from here, you just refine this and polish it up. Just to get it better and better and better by by targeting different areas and I um, like I would look a particular uh, particularly closely at, at the joints usually those are going to be problem areas for most people it's just hard to yeah it's just a harder part of the body like the knees like what happens here exactly uh at the elbow and uh, yeah starting to to introduce the, the clavicles in here uh going into the shoulders like drawing those those are important to draw 
Uh, but, uh, but yeah, really nice stuff, Cassandra. Moving on. Moving on. I'm not even that close to Halima. Where are you going? <laughs> because of this. Yeah, it does look like <laughs> one of those uh, death festival <coughs> makeup. Oh no, they're coming for me. All right, so okay, enough. what's up? Um, so I have a lot of questions to ask, mostly about motivation and style. So I haven't been around for the last two weeks because I wasn't really proud of what I had created. So I tried again this week, but I'm not feeling any better. <clears throat> really? This looks good. What are you talking about? You're crazy. Anyways, uh, <coughs> here's an illustration of a terrestrial creature from mix between two animals and an illustration of an alien creature, more fantastic than alien. Are there any things that stand out to you? I also put the process of the alien creature as, a, um, as I progress in the drawing. I feel like I feel it less and less. Can you tell me if I'm missing something? Well. Like one thing that you had here is a little bit of shading, you know, like in the, like the neck here, the jaw, and here the neck as well. But you're kind of missing that here. Uh, it kind of went away a little bit. Um, so I feel like the volumes read less as a result. Like the shading tends, tend to flatten out. Yeah, it reads, it reads as more flat than, um, than the sketch. Which is strange, but uh, but it's only in certain areas. I think you could fix that pretty easily, uh, like the neck. You know, the neck's a cylinder, so you just want to make sure that this really reads as a cylinder. Uh, if the light's coming from from above, from from the back here, making sure that this has some shading because right now it's pretty flat. Like the neck reads more as like a cutout image rather than an actual volume. Uh, same thing with the other necks as well here. So you know that one here could be. A little darker that one on the front could be a little in the middle rather it could be a little darker as well that one here could also be darker so it's a lot of shading that uh that will help this just making it clear that those are kind of three cylinders coming out of a single single torso you have the torso and then cylinder number one Cylinder number two, cylinder number three. This one's curving a little bit. That one's pretty straight. That one's curving a lot. And making sure that you that you shade those in consequence. <laughs> Looks like a broken hand. Uh, yeah, let's see the, the lights coming from behind, for example. Or do something more obvious, but let's see the lights coming from this direction. And you're gonna get highlights along this line, that line, that line, in the front here, on top of this, and everything else. Everything that's behind here would be more in the shadows. So it's just more of that. You're just making sure those volumes read really well, those basic volumes. Again, abstracting a lot of the details uh, to just focus on the, sim on the simple volumes. But, uh, but the creature itself, super cool. I love the feet too, like how that, that touches the ground, it feels really grounded, really nice, beautiful gestures for those hands. And here the line art is just maybe a little bit less expressive than, than what you had here, right? Your line weight was a lot more interesting in this one. It's like thicker, bold outlines, uh, more subtle details on the inside. And here you kind of lose that once you, once you clean that up. I mean, you can always get it back, you know, by by pushing the shading further, but... Uh... Yeah, I think it's just, yeah, it's just simple volumes in here. I think if you, uh, if you represent those better, if you shade those better, it's really gonna, really gonna, really gonna come to life, come together. And uh, just being careful also with the colors, uh, you have, you know, a lot of, a lot of really bright reds at the feet. 
and like I'm noticing my eyes always going down looking at the feet because it's, it's in exciting colors can't can't help myself and uh, so you can keep them red I think but maybe saturating them a little bit like making them feel red without it actually being red like a red in the shadows doesn't doesn't look red it looks a lot more desaturated a lot less exciting uh, and then keep the really bright red for for where it matters around the focal points and also you know like a blue background against a blue creature the creature kind of blends in the background a little bit so if you had uh, maybe like a darker background in this case it might look cool Maybe darker up here and brighter down there where it's more contrasting. Let's try that. Yeah, like suddenly that pops a lot more, no? Because your color choice, like your creatures, all of it is super cool. I think it's just like the final choice of color and the shading along with the lighting that that don't necessarily let it shine as uh, as well as it could. Oops. But it's a nice, uh, really nice drawing that you got here. I can't help myself. Let's say they're like on a on like a cliff, right? Maybe that could be it. So this is the, this is the cliff here. cliff back here and then further back is just like a dark sky or like a, a darker forest that's why it's a little darker this reveals maybe the silhouette a little bit more um anyways love it so much potential here uh <laughs> this looks great too i mean that looks, that looks like a real animal Anyways, looking at your, let's take a look at your questions here. <coughs> also, with the process of the alien creature, blah, 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 uh, and do you have any idea why I don't like my drawings? What I could do to achieve the famous professional look? Yeah, a lot of that is, is this, you know, just adjusting the contrast, making sure that the, the shading really come, like it makes the, the creature feel alive, like it's coming out of the, the illustration. Uh, like, to be honest, like if I see, if I saw this like real quick, I'd be like, whoa, that's a professional image. What the hell? Oh, wow. Uh, it's really nice. It just lacks a little bit of that, that polish. But uh, I decided to put some drawing of Tetra Nomura, character artist of some of the Final Fantasy game. How could I do? How could I do to have this? What can I do to have this kind of rendering? I like it. colored pencil drawing <clears throat> yeah I mean this is super stylized and like some of these I'd, I'd probably be like ah, colors kind of bad <laughs> like this guy here uh, yeah skin tone could be better the light, there's no real light direction. Like, why is this so bright? Um, but still, you know, like some of this, some of the stuff here, like this is a red cape, but down here, it's definitely not red. Uh, it kind of loses all its saturation and uh, you focus the red where it matters. Same here, it's all red, but in the shadows, it turns into this really desaturated brown uh, or really dark brown. But the shading here is what makes it work. Everything feels like it's it's 3D. The shoulder here is nice and round. Uh, the hair, you can see kind of like the individual strands, uh, the individual locks of hair. Uh, 
Uh, I not a fan of this. This uh, there's a lot that could be better about this one here. So yeah, not all professional stuff is is uh, a good a good example. But uh, yeah, I mean it's tricky, you know, to find uh, <clears throat> to find your style, but. First, do it the right way. Do it how, um, the way that that nature looks like, and and from there, just like line art, just like anything else, from there you can you can style as a bit more, find your preferences. But I would say that this particular artist here, great at line art, he's not that good at colors. Uh, maybe he is now, but when he did this, I've seen a lot of students, a lot of you guys do much better than this already so oh, that helps there we go <clears throat> to Warren what up Warren I am great hope you're good as well uh, so this week I've been trying to tackle a big issue or at least a big issue for me in my artwork the artist Work always makes these incredible looking sketches full of energy and very good looking lines. I've been trying to replicate it for several weeks now and nothing seems to be working, but I'm not sure what I'm doing wrong. Is my brush too big, too small, too bold? Should I be looser? I'm not sure. The device would be really helpful. Uh, would really help out since I love the art style that it has. Let's, uh, is this it? Yeah, those are nice. Quite nice. A lot of it, a lot of what makes this work is the expressive, the expressiveness in the line, you know, because uh, it's it's pretty sketchy when you look at it up close. Oh, there's a lot of stuff in here, but uh, but from a distance, the lines that really stand out, there are few of them, uh, a lot fewer than than in your case, for example. Like yours, nice and clean. Uh, so we can see all those lines very nicely. Those lines very nicely. I don't. I don't know that one is better than the other, to be honest. But um, but in here, as a result, like all the all the sketchiness here almost tends to to disappear because of how bold the other lines are. Like all of that kind of goes away. You don't really see any of this stuff when you look at it. When you look at this uh, quickly. Really, that's that's what you see here. The, the bold outlines so <coughs> i mean it helps also that the that the, the the pose is pretty nice you know the anatomy works quite well here even though it's super stylized shoulders nice the, the simplification here of the elbow nice nice silhouette here position is good position of the breast going into the torso and how that's the perspective here all of that works really well uh, same thing here super stylized but but it works the construction is solid and that's that's really makes it that's really what makes it work um not so much the style you know you could use cleaner lines or whatever uh sketch your lines it really doesn't matter as long as the structure is solid which it is uh, like this here too beautiful sketch very 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 hairy lines right so these lines are not clean at all but the way that he puts the emphasis on on some of these so that that's really all that you see when you look at it quickly uh, like the sketchiness tends to disappear but if the structure wasn't good these wouldn't work he would put the emphasis on something that's wrong and then he'd be like yeah that looks like that looks like poop so it's the structure here that's really what makes it um not so much the quality of the lines Um, and yeah, and in your case, that would be that would be the weakness. You know, the uh, the figure seems a little more shaky. Not as accurate.
but these are hard hard poses to nail like those are not easy at all um so if i were you if you want to get close to this as soon as possible find poses that are much simpler like like not not of these <laughs> like find a character that's just standing standing straight maybe just like an outfit like a cool outfit and and focus on that you know make that work really well and then treat the lines like he does here like highlighting some of these some of the some of the some of the outlines stuff that really that that matters but uh, but all that he does here very similar to what i what i explained in like the um, the youtube video that i did on line art uh making sure that you emphasize any overlap so when something overlaps something else like this is here very close to the camera a, mo a much bolder bold bolder line because it's closer to us and with distance the lines tend to, to get smaller and more fine and less bright uh, that's why you have here like the contour of the the rest of the arm is a lot less bright a lot less visible than this big bold black line here that you have in the for in, uh, in the foreground this elbow is what's closest to us and so it's the boldest as a result and on the inside of the shape very light on details the details are there but they don't stand out too much it's really the outline that that leads the way that leads the eye and here like i probably would have reduce that here a bit like this is no need for that to be so bright uh, so so bold um but still the emphasis is on the outline on the silhouette the inside of the shape a lot a lot more subdued so that's something that you could do here you know your uh your line is pretty consistent throughout so you could you could reduce the opacity based on that so everything that's closer to us could be a little bit a little bit bolder everything that's farther away less less dark less thick so this knee here i'm exaggerating here but the knee compared to the the stuff behind if it's bolder now we understand that it's, it's a little closer you know like you look at it from a distance like, oh yeah the knees the knees in front now it's pretty obvious it's it's those those small tweaks in the lines that, that will make a difference but all of this to say that's just kind of like the that's the icing on the cake if the cake is not is not good then the icing you know it's just a limit to how much you can fix it so in your case yeah just focus on anatomy that's your your biggest weakness in all of these not so much a line quality because this stuff is easy to adjust it's the the anatomy the structure of the body that's harder What the hell, Swarn? <clears throat> Alright, moving on to Preston. <clears throat> so this week it went well. I worked on my back my blacksmith character and got him uh, blah, blah, got him in a nearly finished state. Anything that's uh, you anything you suggest I should fix, particularly with the anatomy color. Rendering and composition per usual. Also, I feel like as if I'm stagnating a little. I'm not quite sure on what I should focus on to get better. What are the skills that I'm lacking the most? That you see. Should I try to tackle those specifically, or should I keep working on everything in general and gradually level up everything? <coughs> well, uh, in here you're working on a lot of stuff and a lot of different, you know, a lot of different skills at the same time. Uh, uh, it depends what you want, but I always recommend, you know, if design is what you're really interested in, is to ignore the colors for now. Like you can do like flat colors, but ignore colors, ignore shading. That's just, again, that's like, that's like the, the icing on the cake. The cake here is the design of the character, the anatomy of the character. Anatomy, design, that's it. Those should be your focus, because um, that's really going, that's really going to be the the selling the selling point here uh, when working on these line sheets the the shading of the character the, the colors that you choose yeah it's nice but it's very it's irrelevant in comparison to the actual design so you know by focusing on color by focusing on shading that kind of stuff you 
you you you practice design less you practice anatomy less because uh, you're not spending time on that so um so that's what i would recommend you know focus on line art and design anatomy that's it nothing else you can do you can do this once in a while you know if it's uh, if it's fun to you but but you're not really going to gain much from that uh just flat colors will will go a long way so um so yeah so that's that uh now so in here like the biggest uh biggest issue i think initially at least is the the presentation i'm not i'm not having a hard time seeing seeing the details oh yeah oh you can totally put that in your portfolio like i'm saying <coughs> the the colors and the shading for a concept artist portfolio is not at all important uh if your entire portfolio was was this versus um, characters that are better designed and that have better anatomy but no colors and no shading, the other guy, you know, the the, the portfolio without any colors would take the job. That's what's important for design. <clears throat> so this is great if you can put it all together. Of course, that just it's more points for you, but um, but those. <coughs> excuse me <clears throat> but yeah like i said those those final ingredients those uh those uh that that seasoning in the end doesn't doesn't help that much um so i wouldn't focus on it too much but going back to this um everything is a little dark so from a distance you know, the hair stands out a lot but, uh, but the details on the character is a little hard to see. Um, the shading maybe doesn't doesn't help here in, uh, in helping how how the reads uh, helping the read. <coughs> Excuse me. But like you know, like here if it was just an uh, an outline. Around that pouch, I think it would it would read better if the detail was a little bit more bold. Maybe that would read better. Um, it's like we lose a lot of the a lot of the information and the shading, uh, like these these pliers here. If the outline was a little bit more bold, so focus on the read. Focus on on communicating the information. Um, the shading, like when the shading is not is not there quite yet. It tends to work against you and so i would completely ditch it you know you can of course practice it you know that kind of stuff is good to practice but uh, but it shouldn't be your focus like that comes later way easier uh if your foundations are, are solid shading is not a foundation shading is just um it's just like speed in art you know you get faster the more experience you have you you you, you get good at shading the more experience you have drawing um so yeah that's what i would recommend uh feature more of the line art like to remove the line art that can be like a style choice much later um but in design usually you want to you want to keep the line art you know make it make it easier for the whoever's going to take this concept to turn it into something else maybe like a like a 3d model for a game you want to make sure that it's easy for them to understand everything that you have here and that it reads well as at a, at a glance very nice though you know uh cool proportions cool cool design just if you didn't spend time on, on the colors and the shading you could have spent a little bit more time on the design <laughs> Damn cough. <laughs> yeah, but still coughing. Oh man, so annoying. <clears throat> Probably doesn't help that I do it like the YouTube videos right before uh, properly destroying my voice before the stream. Nice. 
Uh, and yeah, like in here, going back again to the to the the, the presentation, the values here before uh, between the background and the shoulders very similar. Um, so uh, the character's a little hard to see against that background. I think it'd be better if everything was white, or if everything was complete completely black. Although you yeah, have black text and stuff, so yeah, probably just completely white would help. Um, yeah, you know, I, I, everything here is really, really nice. Uh, love what you did with the gauntlets. Shape language, pretty cool. Like maybe those, uh, <clears throat> those golden rings you could repeat those maybe a, a few few more times in other areas maybe like around around here or somewhere somewhere here maybe on the boots how about the boots just so that it's not unique to the gauntlets it feels maybe more integrated with the rest of the design Like here too, like those balls are pretty hard to see. You can kind of tell what they are, but you really got to zoom in before, before you can tell. So we're just brighter, more focused on the outline. I think that's going to help a lot. What the helps, Preston? <clears throat> All right. So I'm going to go with... Um, Hey, 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 what's up? So I'm trying to get good at observing in which you had recommended to improve my improving uh, by improving your line art quality. I'm on, per I'm on perspective one and two, by the way, I want to excel at landscape painting. <clears throat> Welcome, Preston. Um, so I have a world that I want to let people know. So I guess I should study for it by focusing on shapes, perspective and mark, uh, mark making. Would you recommend me to start the study in uh, study out this way, like this drawing here. I'm a bit guilty for ignoring anatomy though. I wonder if an environmental artist can forever avoid that from your experience. Yeah, yeah. Although like anatomy is great at, uh, at helping you draw volumes in space, which is essentially all that environment is all about, but but yes, uh, if you really know that environment art is your thing, and then you have not much interest to draw to draw characters, you can ignore that, and that will help you level up a lot faster that particular skill. So sure. Uh... <clears throat> right on. So. That was really good. Great study. Uh, yeah, good. Um, like with, with these kinds of things here, it's always there's not a whole lot of perspective in here, so it's not that hard, technically speaking. But uh, what's hard is to maintain a good amount of, of details and be able to take away some details when it when it would be too busy or or maybe yeah and kind of focus and adjust the, the level of detail throughout to to help the reads overall it's pretty good it's just uh maybe it's a little busy in some areas like sometimes you don't need to add everything right so you have like the little squares back here those from a distance are almost invisible they don't really had a whole lot to the structure if they were if they were gone and if this was just wide open like this it wouldn't change the design too much uh, and in your case here it would help the the readability a lot more so those are some of the, the details that that you could take out and a good way to to think of that would be uh to think of the the depth of the painting and the, the painting the depth of the drawing the depth of the scene, 
Um, everything that's further back, usually just like our eyes can see a ton of details, you know, for, for things that's really, really far away, uh, we see we see like the gist of it, but we, we can't see the fine details, not anywhere um, as well as we can see like the stuff next to us, right on the ground. You can see all the all the pebbles on the ground, the details, the, 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 the little dust particles and all that stuff. And the same applies to drawing. So you want to focus a lot more details on, on stuff that's closer and abstract a lot more the, the further back you go. So these are pretty far in the scene. Uh, it's almost like the, the last layer, right? You have here the foreground. That'll be like maybe this little, this little ramp. And then you have the middle ground, that little wall. Those pillars. And then that's that roof. And everything inside of that will be the equivalent of the background here. Um, with each level this way, you would lose some details. And so everything that's back here right now feels almost like the most details, so it's kind of backwards. Um, so I would simplify, simplify some of that. It would, it would help um, us read the structure better. The, the, the texture here in the, in the surface of the building is not really what's important, it's the, the design of the building. That's what you really want to, to extract from this. Um, So yeah, so the way that I would uh, that I would recommend, I mean, I would I would try to to work on the exercise, the <coughs> the assignments that uh, that I introduced in the program. I think those are pretty well uh, pretty well made to to introduce you to the perspectives drawing and to help you think and observe in the right way. Um, and then it gets prog progressively harder and more complex with uh, uh, with uh, the the following terms. But focusing on the perspective, so that you really understand that, that you can that you can build these kinds of structures here uh, in perspective without having to look at a reference, um, just with logic, because that's that's what environment art is. Uh, it's all about perspective, and uh, and then sprinkling some of these studies in here. But out of this, you know what you what you're really trying to to get out of something like that, like a like a study like this is the, the the design of the building like you should be looking at all right so how is this constructed so you have like this this ramp that goes on here here you have like a bunch of tiny bricks then you have like the bigger slabs of you know whatever rock that is then you have those big pillars that are supporting the roof structure then you have kind of like this this flat beam here and then that supports what else and then those big beams here that are probably going through the building um and on top of that, you have the roof and like a slight curve here and like a little tip at the top. Uh, so those are all the things that you should be trying to extract out of this. Um, of course, you can look a little bit at the, like the texture that they use, but that's that's more like the finishing touches that I was talking to, to Preston about. It's not as important here. It's more the design and then uh, also making sure that you focus on the perspective, like constructing stuff in perspective this is this is pretty flat here um so pushing in that direction that helps moving on <clears throat> to Anvaria. this week i tried putting some of my learned skills to the test and drew a character from my story he's a necromancer called hellion and draws his power from the moon. It gives me real motivation by drawing something from an own written story. It's a lot of fun. Yes, I agree. Uh, uh, could you critique perhaps what you think overall the idea and execution and the, the torso anatomy of this piece on the left? I also struggled a lot with the right arm and the left feet. Right arm. But perhaps that will be fixed once I follow more anatomy class. I tried adding a little shading and values, but I haven't done those classes yet, so I'm just going to stuff. All right. So probably not really worth mentioning here, but uh, for me at least, uh, 
because yeah, all of that will get much better as uh, as you practice those foundations. <clears throat> Looks pretty cool though. But maybe a little a little too much contrast, like too dark here. You can't see you can't see the details anymore. Inside of the sleeve, that's fine. But uh, maybe you can see the hand, the arm going into the sleeve too. Cool. Um, for now, I'm actually. I'm actually proud of my progress. In the picture below, you can see what I started with as a concept back in January. Improvement is real. Oh, man. Whoa. <laughs> mm hmm. That's quite a jump. Good stuff. Um, also, did some small torso exercise on the right. Had very little time this week, so I couldn't do one of that. Could you quickly go? Secret. Yes, ma'am. Alright, let's take a look at these. <clears throat> oh, those are good. Those are really good. Beautiful studies. Nice, nice line too. Very aesthetic. Um, one thing I like to keep in mind when uh, when drawing like the the chest muscles going into the abs is that it's it's a nice like it's a nice flow from one to the other. Like uh, you can see here, the abdominal group going into the chest. It's almost like this continuous line. It's like funnel shape. Um, so think of that. Um, that's always the case. So in here, going chest into the into the abs. Continue that, that same line here. This looks great. Maybe this one here going to the. Uh, oh yeah, if this if this is the bicep, then it's fine. Just missing missing the shoulder maybe. Big biceps, um, and then this one here. Uh, I think it's just the, the the height of the chest muscles. Maybe a little too short here for the the length of his torso, because then he ends up having like twenty sets of abs, right? I mean, that could be one, two, three, four. <laughs> Bro, you got too many abs. So if you just make that a little little taller, then you're left with less space to uh, to have your abs, and that makes for a more balanced. More accurate than that to me. But, uh. But the rest of it. Just bigger chest. Very nice, these. Mm mm. Good stuff on these studies. Here, if they're well spotted. Uh huh. Why, we, 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 we. Do they be I? For this one, the back, uh, the back shot. Just a little, just a little off. I think that would go a little lower here. You can kind of tell with this line here. This. Like the change of highlights, you know, like light, dark. Um, uh, that's the, the, the that's the it's probably part of the lattice, uh, the um, yeah, that's the door side. So probably starts a little more like this and then wraps around and then back up, and then you're um. A rotator cuff group will, will take a little bit more space as a result. So, yeah. yeah. So a little a little taller here, this whole group. From this angle. It's a little hard to see from this one. Because it doesn't have a whole lot of definition, but, but the same idea. A little lower. And then deep. 
let's contour all of that. This guy here looks really nice. Yeah, you're right. Like the actually, like this this hand looks looks pretty good. It's more the it's more the arm that I would uh, that I would look into that I would investigate a little more, like um, how this kind of like that would need to be the position of it. And like I think the sleeve is not really selling that. So like if you had like fabric here hanging, that would probably accumulate around there. And so you would have more of that like 90 degree angle going on. And I think that would sell the, the length of his arm a little more because otherwise, otherwise it's hard to imagine the anatomy properly. Um, and probably that pinky here wouldn't, wouldn't be there. That'd be just like palm of the hand. Boing. And then this foot, yeah, a little, little off. Like this one here feels it's planted on the ground, like on a plane that's maybe like a grid that's kind of like that. So if you wanted to do the same thing with this one, heel, toes, and like maybe something like that would work better. But uh, overall, it's really cool. That helps. Moving on. Two. Yeah. Um, number one. Contrast. Readability. <laughs> I'll always be on your case if, um, if, if, if you don't fix this. So when you have dark backgrounds, you know, that's, that's clearly darker than, than mid gray. Uh, use bright text. Um, rule number one. This is just a, uh, sure it's more like maybe more like design, but it's an artistic decision. So make the right choice. Dark background, light text, uh, and vice versa. And then here, when you have a dark outline, just like the text here, you want to have a, a lighter background so that we can, we can see the, uh, see the lines better. And here, once you have colors and, and more light to it, not that big of an issue, but Jesus, man. <laughs> Shut your traps. Sirens. <clears throat> um, still, it's still a little, a little dark. I mean, it's, it, you know, it pops against the background a lot better than the line arts, but, um, but still a little, maybe a little, a little lighter here. Let's see what we can do. And that's a good, good check. You know, if you're not sure, uh, you can always bring up your levels here. And usually, you'll want something that uses the entire graph more or less, you know, like a nice curve like this, where you have like a mountain in the center. Usually, that's the best case scenario. Uh, you just want to avoid having just all the graph concentrated in just some areas of the, of the uh, some of the, the spikes here, concentrated some area, some areas of the graph only. Let's brighten this up. Add a bit more contrast. Improve the readability. Boom, there we go. Much better. Before, after. And now we have a lighter background, dark text, that works. Alright. So what's up, Jan? So I'm currently working on term four, anatomy three, and finished this assignment. Finish this assignment that asks to make a full body from memory. I needed a ref at the end to place correct, uh, correctly the muscle insertions like knees and forearms. Hey, tell me what you think about it. Ooh, most of this was done from imagination. <laughs> Interesting neighborhood. Indies. Indeed. <laughs> Crime Central. <clears throat> could be just somebody that's on fire. Or there's so many old people around here that it could be just an old person that that needs help and it's an ambulance or maybe a murderer on the loose <clears throat> you never know uh that looks really good dude damn yeah i mean the assignments didn't even you know ask for you to go in such detail 
I was more into groups of muscle, focusing on that, but uh, the more the better. That was good. That was really good. Yeah, so um, I'm not going to have a whole lot of feedback, you know, a little bit, but uh, but overall, you did a really good job. So I would be very, very proud of myself if I were you. Uh, let's see. <clears throat> So, 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 uh, like the first thing that stands out is just the, uh, the sartorius muscles here. Um, <clears throat> usually they'll go around the leg, yes, but uh, they wrap up a little sooner, so it's more of a more of a slope like this. Let me see if I can. I don't know that this is gonna be visible. Last time it wasn't. I don't know why it'd be any different today. Uh, again, maybe a little bit, maybe a little bit better. But it's this this one right here, right? Going right under the knee, uh, so that one's a little off. It's just so just adjusting the curve there. Uh, thank you, Mister Anatomy Figure, um, for your service. <clears throat> yeah, other than that, uh, it's pretty pretty damn good. So yeah, from here, you know, the, the next step would be to kind of look at a real anatomy figure and see the disparity, what what's what you got right, what needs a little bit more refining. Um, but man, that, uh, that turned out really good. So now you do the back view <laughs> and the side. Love how we have the, the skeleton in here too. Yeah, man. Uh, very good. Very, very good. I. Uh, that's it. So, like I said, try to do the back view because that's going to tie it all together. You know, a lot of the muscles that are in the front continue and wrap around the body, continue in the back. Um, and if you're up for it, a side view as well. But uh, in terms of anatomy, it's pretty impressive. And uh, I feel like now, you know, like where you are right now, it's the most fun part because you have most of the anatomy puzzle figured out. And now it's just a matter of like placing the last pieces. There's a lot of la there's a lot of a lot of uh, a lot of pieces left, of course, but. Uh, but it's still a lot more encouraging to know that the majority of the, the puzzle, you know, is there. And it's just finding the last ones and and refining and refining until until you're a master at anatomy. But uh, really cool, Jan. Yeah. Just uh, make sure that your presentation is as cool. <laughs> so adjust your levels. Make sure that uh, you don't have too little contrast. It's not too dark. Maybe it was your screen too, so you know, I'm, I'm being hard on, on you for this, but uh, uh, just double check. You know, maybe like it would a separate screen or something, like checking on your phone maybe. Because um, it makes a huge difference. Like now this just reads a lot better. It makes makes this a lot more pleasing to look at. So really good stuff. Yeah, and then from here, also, you know, beyond that, like the, the other puzzle pieces, for example, would be uh, peeling off a layer of skin, you know, a uh, layer of skin. <laughs> He's got no skin. Peeling off a layer of muscle to see what's, what's underneath. So seeing the, the deeper muscles and uh, how those influence the surface, because they do influence a little bit. Um, like there's a lot of layers around the waist, uh, there's, you know, different, different muscles under the pectoralis muscles, for example. Um, and then yeah, like really just dig in, dig in, in a little deeper. But uh, yeah, anyways, like I said, really nice. Moving on to Alessandro. <clears throat> Previous versions are on the left, and the new ones is up there. 
What do you think about the anatomy and the shading? Does it look 3D enough? Light will come from her left side. Her left side. Right. Uh, also composition wise, is my character big enough this time? Let's check it out. All right, Sartorius Gracilis. It rolls, rolls up the tongue pretty nice. <clears throat> All right, there we go. To answer your question. I would make her a little bigger. It's all in the ratio, right? <clears throat> if you look at all of these, you know, for example, look at the ratio, character versus background. <clears throat> Usually, most artists that focus on the character, most of the time, it'll be at least a third of the image. And I feel like it's pretty consistent here too. Not exactly a third all the time, but you know, this versus this. Here again, this versus the center, about a third of the image. Here, third on the side, third on the side, another third for the character herself. Here again, here again, here again, here again. Uh, I mean, maybe those are the same artists and just, you know, you really love this kind of, this kind of ratio, but, uh, but still here too, a third, a third. Um, that's more clearly a character piece when that's the case. In yours here, it's it's more like a fifth maybe that she occupies. So she's still, you know, not necessarily the. She is the focus, you know. Clearly, she's she's bigger now. It works much better for sure, but um, <clears throat> but it leaves a lot of the environment that she needs to fight off by being more interesting. And uh, the more interesting, the more details you have in your environment, the more she'll have a hard time kind of fighting against that and, and standing out as the clear point of emphasis. So when you go with these kinds of ratios, uh, it's a lot simpler because she just occupies a lot more space, a lot, a lot more real estate. And uh, in yours, it's more like... A lot more red so just personally just to be safe i'd recommend that you just you know make her i don't know like 50 percent bigger she said that there's no there's no there's no questions that she's the star of this show and not the environment the environment is there to support her or um, i mean another thing you could do is just get rid of some of the environment so leave her the size she is at right now and then do that and get rid of that I don't know that you want to do that, but uh, but now she's clearly the star of the show. It's her, her show. Nothing else, and you can still see the monster here. You can still have some like some rocks in the back. What's cool is that it forces you to to arrange the stuff just differently. So you could have maybe like the uh, still sirens going on. You have maybe like the, the coast here that reaches a little further back, like she's kind of like in this little lagoon, right? And so there's more overlap this way. It's less like rock here, character there, and like monster here. And instead it could be character here, monster kind of like right behind, and then the rock even behind that. So if that's that big monster was kind of, kind of right here, a little closer to her, um, horizontally speaking, and then the mountains here in the back, I'm adding some some elements in the background for for extra depth that could work really well is really well also and then uh, you would still have all those background elements to you know to, to add cool details too but she now would be clearly front and center kind of following the same the same uh, logic as all of these other ones
<clears throat> like a piece like this could work better if there was like a secondary character. And so, <clears throat> so the two, you know, combined would kind of occupy more space. For example, you know, if you had a, if she were here, and then there's another one. back there like by the by the big head and then she's kind of maybe like looking back and like they're interacting together then that would that would make more sense the scale of each of those characters would need to be as big but uh, but if there's a single one if she's the only focus then yeah you kind of have to arrange things around her maybe a little bit more and it's gonna make a big a big difference composition is uh, it's a significant has a, has a significant impact on on the read. Some would say it's all that matters for a painting. Concept art different, but for a painting, composition is a big deal <clears throat> of the house, Alessandro. Um, but yeah, also to, to comment on the shading here. <coughs> that's pretty good uh maybe maybe the legs a little <coughs> excuse me a little more confusing what's happening here uh up there i think it's a lot more clear but uh yeah so like, i don't know maybe like around the shoulders here you could make that a little a little rounder more like a like a sphere the light going Around the sphere, gets less and less intense as it as it faces us faces us less directly. Uh, but yeah, with the legs here also, treating those more like cylinders. The front of the. Let's see if we can see it on these characters. We can't really see it too well, but you know, there's light here, no light down there because it kind of kind of points back in. So you could remove some of the lights here as well. Same thing under the under the rib cage. And yeah, just think of all of these limbs as just simple cylinders, the shoulders as some, some spheres, how you would shade those, same as the legs simple cylinders, <clears throat> the torso itself as a cylinder, um, but a cylinder that's kind of like, kind of like this, your rib, belly, and so if the light's coming from this way, then that cylinder, this is the top of the rib cage. Light here, light here. Light here, maybe uh, in between. Then uh, no light there. Light here, <clears throat> it's facing the light source a little more directly, and then no light down there. So in red is where the light would accumulate. So that's right here, right here. Talking about the torso only. Well, that helps, Alessandro. Moving on. I. <clears throat> hey, what's up? My week's been going great. Hope yours as well. So we got a commission again. It's <laughs> nice, cranking them out. Awesome. Um, and this is all of the things. <clears throat> this is all of the things from rough sketches to full render. Ginger to the max. <clears throat> so it was supposed to be only fully rendered image, but my dumb <laughs> forgot to double check with the client which specific line art she wanted to proceed with. So the piece on the most bottom right is the result. Bottom right. Oh, that looks good. Oh no. <laughs> uh, well, <clears throat> consider that just extra practice. It's not time wasted. <clears throat> So what do you think of the rough sketches? Are they good? 
like for presenting to a client, then I'll make it more detailed since it's going to get scrapped if not picked anyways. Also, do tell me if there are any obvious anatomy issues on the rough sketches. What do you think of the fold on the dress? Are they believable enough? I just guessed how the fold would go. Well, some folds are better than others. I want to do more anatomy studies, but before I got delayed on the commission, be, uh, because of my mistakes, I was only able to do this much instead. Only this much is still, <laughs> still a good amount. So I'm proud of you. You're, uh, you're being very productive. <clears throat> and it shows because your art is leveling up like <laughs> compared to the first things that uh, the first pieces that you showed me uh, a few months back. I mean, no wonder you're getting commissions more and more. So I'm excited. Uh, yeah, that's perfect in terms of the like the sketch to to show to a client. That's plenty of information. It gives you it gives the client a good a good idea of the pose. Uh, it gives you like it looks yeah it makes it very clear that what your intention what your intention is with this um so there's not going to be like a big surprise once you're done like oh well the sketch changed completely no like you get plenty of information here you know if you show something like that and then you end up with well that's not a good example but uh if you only showed something like this then that probably wouldn't be enough you know maybe the costume would work whatever uh, that, anyways, all of this to say, good enough. Uh, yeah, I wouldn't do less, but I wouldn't do much more than that either. And here, I just feel like maybe the uh, the whole thing is kind of squished. Wink. If it were like that, I think that'd be better. Yeah, and from this angle, to to look back this much, let's try it. Uh, <laughs> like uh, going past the profile is really hard and really uncomfortable. So, just keeping that in mind, probably the most you'd be able to, to rotate comfortably would be like a side shot, something like that. Um, but the pose looks good, otherwise, once you stretch it out a bit. This here, yeah, probably would need a, a reference to figure out what's, uh, what's going on here with the, with the glutes. Right now she's she's missing her glutes, so she's just sitting on her joints. I must hurt to not have that. But uh, but the pose looks nice though, like top of the body here, very nice, very very nice. This one too, love the pose, very expressive, simple detail, but love the hands too. So whatever reference you got for that, or if you didn't use any, either way, looks nice. These hands too, beautiful, love the gesture, probably referenced. Uh, now that it's a problem, good. Moving on to Preston. What's up, Preston? So, <clears throat> I've been struggling with the base face shape for term two, and I'd love to I'd love your advice on how to improve my construction methods. The shading is a little bit off because sometimes something I tried ended up messing with the colors, um, especially darker and lighter ones. So the lighting isn't it isn't really accurate in this entry. I've been trying grayscale first, and then colors as you suggest. The, the biggest issue here is really like the the base of the construction. So like the that that shape. The basic sphere and then all the splits on that sphere. And then how you attach kind of the jaw onto that. Onto all of that. Um, a little shaky. So, I would put a heavier emphasis on that. And, and then from here, you know, you can always kind of add, like, simplify, simplify features to it uh, to make it a little bit more interesting. But, uh, that is what is a little more shaky. Because clearly, you know, like the way that you that you measure everything here, that's that's exactly it. Um, nothing, nothing to to change here. But if your initial structure is a little bit off, then those measurements also will be a little bit off as a, as a result. 
and you end up measuring against something that's not quite quite right. Um, it's it's not that far though, but it's just but that's the that's the the main issue. Still, it's good enough that the end result looks like a face, looks like pretty decent structure, and uh, yeah, it's convincing face. But uh, it's just it's just small things left and right that make it feel like. Not quite like a human. For example, like the side of the jaw here, that's a little too far back for that uh, to to work. The jaw is not not that long. Like this distance here is never that long, and uh, the height of the jaw, like from the uh, like the the ear hole <laughs> to the bottom the bottom of the mandible here, the corner. Um, that's it's not the same size it's a little shorter but not that much shorter and that's pretty consistent across most skulls if i get the i get my little skull here i can get this in focus you know this is the length of the mandible and this is the height of it so it's not the same but it's, still, it's pretty close not that different Just that in your case here, uh, it feels a lot, a lot longer compared to the to the height of it. So again, that's something that's maybe a little easier to spot at this stage. Those those distances. Um, and then going into the cheeks. All of this here. Kind of goes back in, almost like taking a slice out of a out of a orange, out of an orange, and that change an angle here. As a result of that, will uh, will create this here. Something that's kind of missing in your case. So the the cheek is a little high. The cheek's a little high. Then you don't have really like part of the jaw like here you know there's always a little bit left over this angle it's the same as uh you know as this thing right here same shape really just in perspective a little more perspective and uh yeah and yet in here it's kind of missing so i just want to add that back in it kind of fills up the curve of the jaw a little more makes it more more round less straight so yeah, if you just like those, just those basic, basic lines, I think it helps the face a lot to get a, a more believable structure. And then, uh, and then, and then, if those lines here were, were properly elliptical, is that the word? I don't know. In your case doesn't quite work like here it ends up being a little too flat a little too straight it doesn't really have the, the distance that it needs to to wrap up and create like a nice ellipse so that curve here you probably want to to emphasize a bit more so that it curves a little sooner and as a result you know that's going to be the curve leading your eyebrows leading your eyes how you how your eyes are lined up on the face and so here Probably you want that one to be slightly higher as a result. This one slightly lower. You follow that curve properly. The mouth also will follow the same curve. Nostrils will follow the same curve. So that's why I was pointing this out here. Really making sure that the, the volume of the head is on point all the time. Because usually that's where the, the issues are going to be. And in fact, it's that's that's the case here. But um, when it comes to your facial facial structure. Other than that, like the facial elements, the eyes, the nose, the mouth. Nice, very nice. Well, that helps. Moving on to Brad. So Brad, <clears throat> the uh, term four, uh, term five, creature design assignments. I uh, designed a hippo line cross for the create design assignment. I put a lot of effort into the skeleton and muscles for the design. So any point of feedback specifically about the anatomy will be great. For design sheet intended for production, um, how useful is it to include skeletal muscular diagram? Well, <clears throat> so for a ten-story question, real quick, that's that's going to depend a little bit on the project. So, like for a uh, a movie, for example, 
a film where they're actually going to build that. So you're actually going to have the skeleton inside of the body and then they're actually going to build the muscle structure so that the muscles and then they'll they'll attach this they'll essentially build this whole thing in 3d so that when the the animal moves like the muscles will flex properly uh you'll see the bone coming coming out uh you know poking through the skin and sometimes uh deforming the, the deforming the silhouettes the surface of the, the surface of the body and uh and like you can see that for example in like the the hulk movies like the hulk itself himself is all all rigged properly but it's also constructed he, he's got like a muscle muscle structure uh very detailed he's got a skeleton very detailed as well and all of that is put together to create the end result something that looks really believable and um so if it's film you'll need that yeah so it's great that you have it um if it's for video games none of that video games it's just a final result like this nothing's gonna go on the inside the animators will figure that out you know they'll put like simple bones uh simple skeleton it'll look something like that like a, a more complex version of that but you know maybe some some bones here for the spine i'm not a rigger and uh, this is not what it looks like but but kind of you know it's the, that level of of uh of complexity let's say related uh, relative to like a film so skeleton is not at all important and result only is what matters um but it depends you know sometimes if a game maybe if these animals have like an undead version variant uh where some of the skin is kind of ripped off then maybe having the scout having the the muscle um diagram next to it might be useful if that's going to be visible so it really depends on the project but um feedback about the anatomy let's take it let's take a look um these are really cool really really nice yeah very believable too uh you did a really good job here man damn um 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 um, um. So anatomy wise bring up a yeah so as you can see it's pretty close uh, it's gonna be like small ish stuff but uh, i wanted to pull this up because yeah the, the 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 scapula felt a little little long um you know you're gonna have a bunch of muscles here kind of piled up so i think it could be a little shorter and you could have that all of that here wrap up a little sooner making the, the entire arm just less thick. The back leg's gonna be pretty thick usually, and it will probably be a little thicker than that too, uh, just because of the quad. The quad is a big muscle, just like on, on our on our legs. Um, it contributes to a lot of the mass of the leg, a lot of its volume, in the same way animals um, have the same feature. The quads here, like big, uh, that's not the quad, that's the uh i says from ours but the quad here that's a big chunk and that's gonna take some space going to the knee and then you're gonna have calf so yeah i would just make that maybe a little a little, a little fatter here uh the back legs always very muscular very very big usually bigger than the front legs but in your case like this, this is pretty big so we'll kind of switch, take some of the muscles here, slap it on the back leg, and you'll be good to go. Maybe you can make the, the forearm a little a little thicker too. Because it's pretty, you know, it's a pretty big animal. We need we need the extra muscles. Just a little bit more mass here. And um the foot also. Because this is a pretty long, long, um, long bone, long tibia. So I would probably shorten that, shorten that a little more, like bring the heel higher. Maybe up here. And so that, that becomes the foot. So it doesn't have to go that low. So shorten, uh, shorten the, uh, the lower leg like this, make the foot a little longer. Um, yeah. Well, 
I don't know. It looks really good, man. Really good. Love the color variants too. Like this, this one is. This one's probably my favorite. This one looks super creepy too. Maybe the, uh, a little too dark. You know, if uh, if it were a little lighter, I think we could read better. That's obviously too much, but... Maybe more like this. Again, you know, if it's a design, it's meant to to be information for the, the 3D artist to take and then turn it to something else. Um, in most cases, at least. So, making sure that we can see all those details here, all those lines. Um, important, very important. We did really good for the other ones. Okay, this one's just maybe a little too dark in comparison. But uh, yeah, nice. Shading wise, you know, if you look at this here, the uh, director's spine and muscles, like all of the, the muscles here around the spine, could maybe be better shaded. So having that here be represented in the shading. But you can really feel like the rib cage kind of sliding underneath those muscles, and then these back muscles kind of going over everything. But, uh, yeah. Other than that, very nice. Yeah, it's a beautiful hybrid. <laughs> it looks awesome. <coughs> well, that helps. Moving on to Zenith. Cup number two. Come to Papa. So, what's up, Zenab? I hope you're also doing great. I'm doing good, thank you. This week I experimented a little. This was drawn traditionally as a study, but then I decided to turn it into a full painting. Keep the original line art. I keep the original line art. <coughs> I keep the original line art and page layout. However, painted the hand. Uh, painting the hand gave me a hard time. It's a weird position and it looks off. Maybe it's because it looks. Because I look at it for too long. It's a weird, it's a weird position for the hand too. It's pretty unnatural. So yeah, it's normal that like we don't have much visual library for the, for those kinds of weird, weird poses. But uh, but overall, man, this looks good. Look at that shading, very well done. Love the like the foreshortening here, the treatment of the anatomy, how you how you drew the the legs. That is spot on. Very nice. Very very nice. Maybe um, maybe saving a little bit more space for the quads, a little bit less for the the, the calves. You know, like this is a lot smaller than this big trunk right there. We're just making sure that's the case here as well. Really good. Very nice. Um, <clears throat> maybe I tone down like the the saturation in the background here, just so that it doesn't compete too much for attention. Because it tends to make the figure disappear very similar in terms of um, in terms of values here you can see it stays pretty horizontal doesn't go up or down too much um, try to have a little bit more contrast in values between your background and foreground actually 
actually that was pretty good. I'm gonna get it. Oh, come on. There you go. This versus this. Again, just values, background and foreground. Um, minor presentation. Too weak. Uh, Also, just like shading on the on the jacket here, I feel like you can you can tell the volume a lot better on here. You know, a lot brighter up here, a lot darker in like in front of the torso. Yours feels a lot a lot flatter in comparison. Just a, a little bit more, a little bit more of those shadows on all that stuff. I think I think that would help. The hands, the damn hands. I mean, yours is pretty good. What are the main differences here? The thumb a little bit, slightly different angle. Like for the <coughs> for this one here, we can't see. We can only see the knuckle. We can see like this part here of the thumb. Step. More of a straight line like this. Maybe you can see a little bit more of the palm on the inside. Not much, but a little bit more. And fingers just a bit longer. Compared. But overall, it's pretty, pretty damn close. And just yeah, once again, it's just a it's kind of a weird pose. You know, it's kind of like drawing a drawing a, a person with an arm like this. Like, it's just weird, you know. Like usually you'll try to to go like this instead, so that we can see a little bit more of the arm. You can see the stuff just in better detail, in a more aesthetic angle. And like a hand like this is it's just not a not that aesthetic. It looks kind of weird. Same idea here. But, uh, but the structure is pretty good. Yeah, the big uh, the big issue here is not so much the hand. I think it was definitely more like the, the shading on the on the jacket and uh, like the thickness of the quad in comparison to the the lower leg. Did a really good job. Very nice. Olivia. So I've been working hard on internalizing better construction for my figures and have been taking a lot of inspiration from Curtis's recent contributions to the stream as well as your own suggestions. Would love your feedback on how I did. Each of these figures took about 20 minutes and they were done from reference. We're trying to get to the point of being able to pose these from my imagination in the future. Be harsh with me. Okay. <clears throat> I want to be learning it correctly. Finally, you and Vika will be annoyed with me because I've gone back to my previous version of the Exorcism pick for now. I have a deadline to finish it by the day of your stream and the figure study took much uh, took me longer than I would have liked. So I've had to set aside the reposing and finish what I had for now. Uh, I absolutely, uh, it'll, I'll absolutely apply the dynamic uh, posing advice in my next, uh, my next image. But for now, I'd appreciate your thoughts regarding how to light this effectively. I've taken it to the level of ambient occlusion and would like to give it a bit of extra oomph with a good main light and some effects. All right. Well, knowing you, I know that uh, lights is not going to be too much for, too much of a concern. Uh, if I remember the last piece, you know, like the, the cyberpunk one, it was mm, quite exquisite. So I'm really looking forward to see what you do with this. Um, Let's check it out first. I 
for this one. Um, <clears throat> before, <coughs> excuse me. Before you move on to the on to the lights, just one, some few, just minor tweaks that I would recommend. Um, the hands of the character that's closer to us, closest. Uh, these these are fine, no problem. Uh, but this one's a little closer, and her hands should probably be a little a little bigger as well. So that that feels a little small. These two, like baby hands on a woman body, and also just in comparison to like the the length of her like um, forearm, for example, it's pretty small. Uh, <clears throat> and here also, if there's foreshortening going on here in uh, the arm. So if the, the forearm here is not so much foreshortened, but the upper arm is a lot, I just want to make sure that you have that, that clear overlap between the two. So forearm in front and the uh, upper arm behind. That line right here is important. Yeah, bigger hands. Um, and the only other the the other thing that that's that's breaking the pose a bit uh are the feet and how they're not quite planted on the ground like if you take this ellipse here it's not gonna be quite the same that you have for the feet like the feet are a little bit more it, it's a little a little rounder a little less flat than the one that you have for the rune and that makes them floaty a little bit so to fix that i think it's just a matter of like straightening that leg that like, straightening that curve here just a bit more let's see Pretty subtle, but it makes a big difference. This one here too, maybe a little too, a little tilted. Not much, but enough to make it look a little weird. Enough to make it floaty. Probably, um, what is it? Too little, too low. That one. Yeah, like looking at the knees, feels like maybe this leg should be a little higher. Like the horizon is right here. So anything that's above that, you know, if it's a cylinder, it's above it. You know, we won't be able to see the top of it. We'll be able to see the bottom, bottom cap, but the top cap we won't be able to. Just like those boots here, you, you wouldn't be able to, to get that curve. It'd be a curve that goes the other way. Look at that one as well here. Just adjusting those. Uh, and uh, for this foot looks pretty good. That one too. That one's pretty nice. That one here maybe a little floaty. The back one. That would be pretty flat. It's really, really close to the uh, to the horizon. So that ellipse will be very flat back there. I think it feels better. <clears throat> I think the operation was successful. Let's see. Probably that foot is still a little too. I'm gonna do the same thing here, flatten that. Flatten mm -hmm. that sole. <clears throat> but um, yeah. It feels a little, a little better. Something like that. Um, 
So anyways, <clears throat> that's that for the perspective. So real quick, lighting. Hmm. I mean, you have a rune in here, so I would I would guess that you want to play off of that. Uh, you know, having kind of like all of this stuff here be the light source, maybe. So kind of like a bright light from from the ground. That kind of stuff could be could be pretty epic. And then uh, yeah, in the back maybe it's a <clears throat> maybe a little bit more subdued. Maybe like a darker environment, or I mean, it could still be sunny. But I think like this light source, if that's the focus, like if this is important, if the rune's important, uh, I think it would sell the story a little bit a little bit better if the emphasis was on that in terms of the light. Uh, <coughs> and since it's a like a warmer light, if you're going for the yellow, um, having like a yeah, like a darker, um, desaturated mm, purplish warm blue uh, tint for the background. Like maybe it's a uh, Maybe it's at night, but it's like a full moon outside, so it's pretty bright. And also you get like the nice moonlight shining in. Maybe there's like a, I don't know, some, some light up here as well. And that's coming in and that's, that's cooling down the background. I don't know. Something like that. Just an idea. And these here real quick. Mmm. Yeah, I like uh, I like having these lines. It's a good, uh, good addition to the practice. It forces you to really be conscious of the volumes at all, you know, in all areas. So nice. I would keep doing that. Yes. Ah, those are beautiful, man. Those are really, really nice. I mean, it's not really something that you've that you've been like super struggling with. You know, you're you're. Sketch your figures always really nice, but uh, yeah, these are beautiful studies. Nice, nice quality to your line. Love the perspective in here. Good proportions. Yeah, maybe like the hands and the feet making them a little smaller. Uh, because they're smaller in the references, it makes makes the figure look more adult. I think you've been drawing too much Vivi and... You know, bigger hands, bigger feet. It looks more like a like a younger younger person. Um, not all of them, but like this one here, for example, it looks very much like Vivi's age. Now it's mostly because of the feet and the hands. Anyways, really good stuff. That helps. Mm -hmm. to, to, to Santiago. You up? All right, we here. I think it's your your construction maybe in a, in like a scene in relation to to each other because your individual studies like these they're all nice. You know, so if that was if that was it, if that was the image, nice. It looks great. It's just when you place them all together, uh, now the proportions start to to look a little more wonky. Uh, the relation between all of them, like where they are in space and how they interact, it's not as not as not as nice. It's just it's it's a different challenge, you know, completely to place characters in an environment, especially when the environment is so strict in terms of like its perspective there's no 
there's no messing around here. You're in a box, you know, right? So if the characters are not in the right perspective, on the ground, uh, it looks it looks off really, really quickly when they're flying in the air like this and kind of in isolation without much of a background, a lot easier. So it's just super high challenge, this stuff here. High difficulty. Yeah, it's so great. How to practice that? <clears throat> a lot of it is uh, just practicing, <coughs> excuse me, practicing construction from imagination. It's understanding like um, just having a clear image in your head of how those volumes are are angled in relation to one another, in relation to the the whole space, uh, is just your it's just adding more balls to juggle with. Uh, when it's just a body floating in space, it doesn't really matter what the background is. You know, you don't have to adjust it to that. Uh, I guess it's similar to like playing an instrument on your own and then playing with a band and trying to to match their flow, trying to match their tune, and having all of that work. That's a lot harder. I feel like. Uh, than playing in isolation on your own at your own tempo without really caring about anything else. Um, Santiago, <clears throat> uh, everything's great. Hope everything's good for you too. I already su submitted. I guess I'm. I guess that's submitted. Submitted this piece for the contest and wanted to show you the final results, get feedback, and hopefully polish it a little bit more before I submit it to my social media. Probably the most difficult painting I've done because of the several over paintings I had to make, and also because of my situation with my dog. Yeah, man, sorry to hear that. That that really sucks. Uh, but as always, I really appreciate your help. Yeah, similarly, like for me, like I I just threw myself in work. Uh, that was right at the time where I I I decided to just do a huge push to finish art school, and uh, it really helped, you know, to just think of something else. Time heals. Um, so yeah, my name is. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, Livio, you. you're just going for the the final boss right from the start. So, <laughs> so anyway, Santiago, I'm, I'm happy that uh, I'm happy to see that you're able to to put some work in, <coughs> to, you know, to distract yourself. It's all good stuff. That works a lot better. I seen the leg here. Yes, 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 yes. I still feel like the right leg is like the way that it blends. Like this one feels nice because you can see it's. It's a, it's a little bit more gradual, you know, how, how she's fusing with the root. So I still feel like it will be better if, if she was more like sitting on it. Uh, like riding the branch. Like riding a horse. And and that leg here in the back, you know, you can start to see like the root maybe like over it and kind of twisting around the leg. Um, but the way that it's just a weird position because you have one leg that's bent and then the other one feels like it's going... Like it feels like uh, when the le when the um, when uh, when the branch is not going in between her legs, it feels like this leg is kind of laying straight like this, just like a weird, uncomfortable pose. I'm having a hard time wrapping my head around. Um, and here, like you could have like those those branches kind of kind of continue to really reinforce the fact that she's turning into a tree, and it's all connected. And now that you have the extra length of the leg. To introduce that that gradient from branch to skin, I think it reads a lot better. Makes a lot more sense. I really like I really like this. Um, maybe you could add a little bit of that that glow here on on more of the branches. Like it's nice that you have it here. Um, and the more the more something is is overlapped with something that's bright and be, uh, like behind. <coughs> Let's say that <laughs> it's a terrible way to say it, but. <coughs> probably didn't understand any of that but um let's say you have a a bright object in the background and you have something in front the highlight's always going to be a lot more intense um but uh, yeah anyways to uh could also add some of it here because that seems to still be facing the scene you know some some light particles could definitely hit in that in that area and I would help propagate maybe the the warmth a little, a little more, a little further into the scene. Anyways, just makes sense too, because the light should be able to reach here. But maybe not as maybe not maybe not as intensely as it does here. Um, still on the character though, the light like probably wouldn't be able to reach in the armpits. 
Probably not. <coughs> <coughs> Probably not on the side of the shoulder either. You know, if the light's coming from like on the inside, just like on my on my shoulder here, you can see the sun. But everything that's in the shadow right now would be what's uh, being lit for her, kind of the opposite. So all of this here probably wouldn't be able to receive any of the light the side here either. Maybe the side of the rib cage towards the front here, maybe a little bit more. Like if it helps, you can rotate it so that the light's coming from above, like a like a more typical light situation, like a, like a sun from shining from above. So yeah, I think still some, some some light light two weeks. Would help sell this even better, but uh, that was really cool. Really cool. Yeah, yeah. Good luck. Good luck with the contest. Oh, that helps. <clears throat> Moving on to. To, 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 to. Nathan, what's up, Nathan? So I've been practicing my figure and face drawing quite a lot lately, and I finally feel like this is getting a little bit better. I don't really have any specific questions, so any feedback is welcome. All right. Oh man, those are good. Those are good. <clears throat> When I say, when I talk about the feet planted on the ground, that's it. Very simple, very, very effective. This works really well. It makes all the difference. These characters feel like they're on a stable surface. Feels nice and nice and heavy. Uh, yeah, those are beautiful, beautiful. So um, these studies are fantastic. Like I said, uh, keep doing, doing more and more and more. Like never stop. That kind of stuff is. I still do a lot of these all the time. So very very useful. Um, but like I said earlier in the stream, it's kind of like cardio. You gotta you gotta maintain that stuff. Um, otherwise you forget. Now what I would introduce to help solidify this uh, this this knowledge even more is to maybe like for, for each five that you do, introduce one, or for each four, whatever. You know, for each few that you do, introduce one that's from imagination. That's similar to one that you've done in the past. So don't try like a, a completely new pose, <coughs> but try to recall some of the poses that you've done and maybe like combine two. So maybe like this one, like the legs of this one here, and maybe like, a, I don't know, like that torso, you know, like something that's not too complicated, something that could work together. Um, somewhat in the same pose like maybe that one's a better example like these legs kind of similar and maybe swap the torso when you do one from imagination and uh, this will like continuously force you to to evaluate your level and to to spot your own your own you know shortcomings and then be able to fix them in the future ones that you do and then test again and then fix them in the future ones test them again uh, have done a lot of that it helped me make a ton of progress really really quickly so highly recommend that you do that introduce this into your to your workflow uh yeah these are beautiful fantastic excellent wow the face is a little more shaky and not as not as solid <clears throat> construction wise so maybe i would focus less on the facial features 
and more like less on on details like uh, you know like getting the eyes perfectly like this the eyebrows the nose probably not super important right now it's kind of like uh focusing on like the the details in here and making sure that oh well is that is that elbow in the right angle should be maybe more like this or like that's not really important it's the the overall the overall structure that makes that makes the most impact and so i'll focus on that um details yeah, that comes with time it's kind of like speed uh so in here like maybe the nose like this maybe there's too much detail here maybe like just simplify it even more just like almost nothing and the most of the emphasis i feel like what i feel like would help the most is to focus on the structure of the head here so mandible a little long compared to the height of it adjusting that here really understanding and really getting used to drawing those those basic shapes for the head um, yeah, the eyes like this the eyes will be somewhere around here and kind of focusing on those those details here or those those lack of details rather so if you can draw this in a bunch of different angles kind of you doing the same process that I that I mentioned here so you do a few from from reference like looking at photos and then you try one on on your own someone something that's similar to, to something you've done in the past um, so that eventually you can draw these from any angle from imagination and after that like adding the adding the, the facial features which you can already do it's just that the the structure is is not quite there yet and so the you know the features obviously are a little a little shaky their position is at least as a result so yeah, i would focus on this stuff um, then to add the eyes in here very simple a lot easier too um and that's the most important part that helps very nice and happy to see the the amount also that you that you practice good stuff curtis ooh. Yay. Here's what I've done this week. I think I'm more or less finished with this piece, but I figured I'd ask what you thought before posting. I also included my original drawings for this character from back in February of this year. I've adjusted a couple of things for, uh, from the design, but it's more or less the same character. Anyway, let me know anything. Yeah, I'm oh man, like this wasn't bad, but, but compared to this, it's bad. It's not bad again, but compared to <laughs> what? Damn, I didn't realize. What have you been eating? Jesus. Like completely different artist. Uh, damn, dude, <laughs> that's really impressive. Uh, I'm moved. Um, all right, so I have, ah, oh, man, I love, love this. It's like professional art. Look at these perspective on this, the hands. Mm. The way that you adjusted the legs now, hells yes. Oh, man, so good. Um, I do have feedback. But it's not going to be on the drawing itself. The drawing is ah, chef's kiss. It's going to be mostly on the colors. So I wouldn't change anything around here. I think like the face in this area, I think that's nice. It's very nice. Good amount of contrast. Good good difference between the shadows and the highlights. Um, it's more with the, the purple of the outfit that, have, that, have, that takes some issue. I think it just doesn't doesn't have the same amount of contrast and so it feels maybe like a little radioactive as a result like this going into this mm, yeah the shadow is too saturated i feel like and you have kind of like a saturation tornado and just a little too much you just saturated these almost completely I 
like on the legs here, maybe a little bit more, a little bit lighter. Not too light, you had a good idea, you know, to get the right idea to have a little bit more contrast up here. That would be definitely nice. Okay, a little more, just a little more. Make it feel like it's coming towards us a bit. So essentially, a little bit more contrast, but but at the same time toning down the um, the saturation. That's the beauty with colors. You don't need to actually get rid of the colors. You can just kill their effect by having complementary colors mixed in and keep the keep the sweetness, the saturation around the focal point. Mm -mm. But also in here, like another another thing you could add maybe. Uh, since it's pretty bright outside, you have this this wide ground. Probably introduce a little bit of a, <clears throat> a little bit of bounce lights. That's another one that would help us in this case. It would probably make sense to him. I mean, you could even have more than that because that's because that's pretty bright. So it would definitely bounce a lot. Boing boing. And like back here, it feels a little, a little busy. I think you could just, this seems like it's against the light too. It's the stomach. Uh, you have kind of like the breast as like a roof acting on top of it. I think you could, uh, you could put all of that in the shade. Not have much of it be lit. And keep the focus on the staff here. And the chest, maybe a little bit still. These trims there. Needs more work. It's still really subtle at this, at this, uh, you know, at this level. But um, yeah, a little bit of color adjustment, a little bit of tweaking the lights, like where the light hits, where it doesn't hit. Feels like on the legs, that's not quite right. Like the staff and like the torso here. I have the lights coming from this side. Probably most of that. Probably a lot of that torso would cast shadow on that on that leg too. Like maybe that would be more in the shadows. Like I would, um, I would bring up the what is it? Uh, magic poser web. Put her in the same <clears throat> in the same angle. Match the uh, uh, well, not that dude, but like select the girl and use the same pose and match the lighting for the head, like what you have on the face, because the face is beautiful. Like don't change that. That's the best part. And then see what happens to the leg. See what happens to the the shading on the stomach and that kind of stuff. Because I feel it's not quite right. Um, and like this, this deserves accurate lighting because it's a hell of a nice drawing. Um, and yeah, man. Yeah. And that progress is just February. What kind of madman makes this much progress in what? Six months? Seven months? What the hell? Very impressive. What the hell? Uh, hmm. Moving on. Katie, this is the latest piece that I've created. I haven't started to color it yet, and I'm still focusing on the values. Do you maybe have any advice on how to make this piece pop a bit more without adding too much detail? Looks very good. Um, <clears throat> I would look at the hand a little bit, a little bit more again. <coughs> just the pinky, I think, is the one that that stands out to me uh, the most. Like, it's just clearly fatter than the other ones, and it's small is the smallest finger. So I would adjust here the size. Uh, to make sure that it doesn't uh, doesn't stand out too much this way, uh, and, and probably like use a reference, maybe like use yourself as a reference to uh, like put a lighter on or anything in your hand to to get those those angles right, um, the length of the fingers right, because right now it doesn't really feel like it's gripping it properly. And also another thing that I, I was just mentioning not too long ago, but like when you draw hands, avoid having stuff like overlapping itself a lot like i'm trying to get a better angle here but like this is really hard to do, really hard to pose like this um so always best to, to kind of go like this to open it up so you can see the inside and then the part of the part of the wrist like on on the side of it or that way um just try to avoid to line up try to avoid lining up things like you know like this on a straight line and having it overlap it doesn't doesn't look that good um, yeah, so I look at the hand and 
and adjust that. And also at the same time, probably uh, probably the looking at the length here of your of your limbs, because if the elbow is right here, it's a pretty long arm. So maybe if the elbow is a little higher, maybe like up here. Yeah, I go try to have the elbow be around around this this point here. So maybe like wrap up the arm a little sooner. It doesn't look like it's too long. Maybe have that a little higher as a result. Um, character looks nice though. So to make this pop a little bit more, I think it's gonna be the very similar feedback like um <clears throat> that I gave you last time and that you lack a little contrast. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> it feels like a little washed out. Um, so I don't know if we could solve that with just adjusting the level here. Maybe. Yeah, that helps a lot, actually. With very minimal effort, very minimal efforts. You know, from here to here, I think it's pretty clear, you know, like, this feels a lot, a lot better. Um, yeah, and then I would go in and like, uh, in just the smallest areas to not like change your style completely. That's not what I'm trying to do, but in, in some areas where, where it might, it might make sense since you have, you have shading. That's not like a, you know, it's not shell. It's not cell shading. It's not like super harsh shading. It's a little bit more painterly. So, I would uh, definitely recommend here, like uh, some areas going a little darker where it's needed in between things, uh, where things connect, like here between the hat and the head, the hair, uh, the little flap here for the hat, going a little darker there, just to make it feel just a little bit, a little bit more 3D. And if you want things that pop like this, is it? That's, that's the kind of thing that make, that make the drawing go like, whoa, all right, that looks nice. Same thing here on the inside, maybe going a little darker. Where a lot of the light would kind of get lost, can't escape. Underneath here. Again, it's very subtle, like this is not, it's not changing the piece too much. It's very like, very localized, very minimal impact on the, the whole image, but it really, really helps. In the deepest folds here, going a little darker. Down here too. Yeah, the fold, the fold, your folds look good. Uh, like maybe like one thing that's it's a little off, like the how you line up the eyes. It feels like this, this one here. His left eye is a little, little off compared to the right one. Maybe a little, like if he's looking at the at the lighter. I don't know if that's if that's what you wanted, but. That's the case, like those two be a little closer to the center to make it feel like he's, he's focusing on something that's closer up. Uh, but there's something, there's a little bit of an offset in there, like the two eyes are not looking quite in the same direction. And it makes him look like a little bit like a fish, you know, like where the eyes kind of looking sideways. It looks kind of silly. Uh, but very, very, very subtle. So, hope that helps. All right. So, we were just about review Elijah's submission here. So let's get to it. Hope the week has been awesome. Yes, sir. Hope you was too. This is my first time trying anything like this. Honestly, has never been a part of my drawings before. I restarted this at least four times this week. It's still, uh, it's for sure still in the preliminary steps. Preliminary, <laughs> preliminary, there we go. Steps still. I just don't necessarily know where to go into details at a certain point to continue to add to it. Um, if you could help out with that and tell me anything, if there's an, uh, tell me anywhere, if it isn't making sense, I really appreciate it. Also pay no attention to the incorrect perspective on the close walls. Close, close, close like this here. I couldn't find the file where I fixed it. All right. Close wall. Close wall. Mm -hmm. 
This looks good, and look at that lighting, man. That adds a lot. All right, all right, all right. Well, the only thing here that I can spot right away, maybe you can too, is those big stairs. <laughs> this, this little guy's gonna be like crawling up the stairs. Oh. Maybe, maybe that's maybe that's okay. Maybe it's like a uh, a Titan's Titan's temple made for really big people that are that are now extinct and now he's like a like exploring an old ruin um but yeah at first glance uh this looks good so it's really good so let's see there are any mistakes in here The naked eye, like everything seems really spot on. Nice stairs, very, very well, well done here. Uh, all of these details there, that was good. Properly spaced out. Like maybe, maybe this one's a little, a little too, too far out, but because remember with distance, everything tends to kind of get closer together. So, I mean, you could check that, but still looks really good. Uh, and looking, you know, at this one here, and that one suddenly becomes a little, a little thicker. I think you could shift all of this here a little bit more, a little bit more even, and have the other one starting much sooner. But that being said, it's a small detail overall. Uh, I think you did a really good job here. So, 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 you were asking me about details. <coughs> yeah, in here, so, the, the details here don't match the scale of the character. I think that's the, the biggest, the biggest thing. If it's meant to be a, like an environment that's much bigger than the character itself, uh, like at a different scale, like, like I said, if it's made for giants, um, then you would be like for for this to work, we just need to add details at the scale of that character, um, at least nearby, like around him. <clears throat> excuse me, around him. So it's it's a little tricky when you when you go this this route, like when you have like a really tiny character in a really big environment. Um, but uh, you'll have to adjust to, to his scale if his scale is like the normal scale. And if the building is in fact really, really big. So I mean like uh, adding, I don't know, like some, some small details on the ground, like maybe some, some tiny bricks uh, or tiny pebbles or tiny rocks, that kind of stuff. Maybe, I don't know, maybe some, some bushes here in the corners uh, that might have, you know, kind of grown with time. Uh, some little shrubs. Uh, it could be, yeah, it could be like different details in here. So maybe those, those stairs are not that simple. Maybe it's a bunch of, bunch of layers. So maybe you have on the top slab and then beneath that you have like smaller bricks. Uh, that may cut kind of the entire stair. And that would help really emphasize the fact, <coughs> the fact that the structure is massive and materials are just normal, like normal human size. Um, Either that, or just make the character much bigger, and then you don't have to worry about that. Because then, if you want to add things like, uh, like torches and stuff like that, it, probably those torches were made for the giants that that build that place, and so they'll be like massive compared to the character. That might not that might not be super helpful. Uh, but yeah, you would just need to try to find and add stuff that's at a human scale. Bunch of small details, at least in the surrounding area around here so that we, we get we get a feel for it. And then that would mean like things like, uh, yeah, like this stuff here would add a lot more details, maybe like a lot of smaller folds, because this is huge, you know, it's a huge curtain compared to this guy. Like three times as high, like 10 meters tall, something like that. Maybe not three times as tall, but uh, 
yeah so in terms of details that'll be that'd be the kind of stuff um that you want to pay close attention to like how do they how do how does a human build something like this how many blocks are needed uh maybe there's like a small one again like a small ramp and then some some bigger blocks that are used for the the wall itself uh it'll be a texture detail mostly now uh yes indeed so for the stairs here um the shadow will won't follow this particular line you know you have some steps and so the shadow will kind of adapt to that uh it's as if you're casting a shadow on the wall onto a wall since we can see the top of the stairs anyways so yeah shadow on the wall it'll just be you know, like a straight line like this if there was if this was the bridge that was casting a shadow it'll just be a straight line like that if the bridge was higher and so anyway that's gonna result into something that looks kind of like that and then as it gets higher and higher probably closer and closer to the wall until there's no shadows cast left oh no i made a mess we have something like this trying to still keep the line straight going towards the third vanishing point up here um, and as the distance of this wall shrinks 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 the shadow cast is you know reaches for um, doesn't reach as far on the stairs and that's why this is kind of diminishing as at the same time um, and then down here Inside of this, you would probably have <coughs> very little light as well, if you don't have any light on that side. Maybe a little bit of bounce light, but yeah, probably not as much of that. It would probably be mostly, mostly in the shades. Um, if the light's coming from above, again, this little roof, same idea, nothing, like no light will be able to hit that, like the upside of the roof, the ceiling. Um, the upside of the roof. That makes no sense. The, hit the ceiling directly, and so that'll be in the shadows. On the inside of the wall here, yeah, maybe. The entrance itself, like the doorway, will, will let some light in. Um, then in here, it's gonna be mostly dark. What mentioning something about the perspective let's check it out vanishing point v whatever of the the door maybe that's what you were referring to but that, that we use this one here right so these archways um follow the same line everything that points up essentially needs to go to that point here so that one here would also go towards that point good catch uh, the stairs as well would go towards that point so the side of the stairs here all of these here would be more like this Slightly slanted. Same thing for all of these. Uh, that door here looks good. The, the little, uh, these little things here on the wall look good. Uh, uh, uh. Yeah, so, I mean, these stairs as well. The other side of the stairs need to, to be adjusted as well. As well, as well, as well, as well, as well, as well. This 
see. So some small adjustments. Uh, and this one here is going to be probably the biggest one. Making sure that you, you adjust the tilt of that entrance. That's going to be pretty crazy looking. Uh, that little the bottom of those stairs too will need to be adjusted in consequence. So we'll see. We're just introducing a lot more, a lot more stretching in there. Uh, this is the biggest defender, but make sure that you look at the stairs as well, so that they follow the same, the same vanishing points. Um, 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 um. Yeah, well, that helps. Good, good, uh, good spotting that. Hopefully. Um, moving on to Lex. It's been a good week over here. Great. I hope you've had a spectacular one. Yes, sir. Between last week's attempt at realism and this thing to the left that started out as a figure drawing and got carried away, I've ended up working hard on my observation skills. Excellent. I would love to hear your thoughts on either project. Is there something missing from the painting on the right that could push it to look more real on the left? Anatomy mistakes and specifically tips for knees and elbows are things that might help as I go to add lighting. I kind of want to redo the hair in a different way so that I can pick my own light. Great reference. Not the easiest of reference, but definitely not the hardest either. So perfect. I think that's a, that's a good one. It's not just like a character standing still, you know, with, with nothing going on. There's a little bit of a pose, but it's, it's facing forward. It's not too much foreshortening. Great. Um, good reference. And we can see all the limbs very well. Oh, is that the... Ooh. Oh, ho, ho. Oh, man. You went to town on that one. That looks good. All the small details here, the wrinkles. Oh, yes. And the shirt here, a little bit of texture. Mm. Mm. I am impressed. Yeah, dude, that is... That's that's really good. Like The, the brightness here also. A little bit of a... A, a little bit of a like a reddish transition into the light. Ah, oh, mm, mm, mm. that was good. That was real good. The only thing I'd say maybe like um, it's just like the, it's, it's so small, it's a small detail, but the like the pinky, how it feels maybe like too even. You know, uh, if you look at yours, the base of it is a little a little wider. Uh, at the joint here, maybe like in the back here, you could make it, make it a little a little thicker, just so that it's not like a perfect sausage. Uh, maybe the tip a little bit narrower. Uh, I'm not talking about like a lot here, just a few pixels, but uh, just so so that it's not like just a straight straight uh, yeah, just a straight sausage. That <laughs> uh, you feel those uh, those little pads here a little bit more, maybe uh, very subtle. But everything else, man. Uh, you did good. That's a nice study. Yeah, me too. I'm like, so where's your painting? Oh, oh, oh that's the painting. Like this really helps. You know, all the little subtleties in the in the skin there. These tiny folds, uh, wrinkles rather. Man. All right, let's check out this other one. Wear brush. For this one real quick. Uh, I don't. I, I can't re recall the the, um, the photo exactly. I know it's very very similar, but just for like um, just to make the hands stand out even more, because the hand is beautiful. Uh, I feel like you could maybe like just 
cool the colors down just a bit like in the back here. Instead of going for kind of this orange wash everywhere. Maybe, like not by much, it's very subtle, but let's see maybe. Yeah, this or like some, some blue tint. Just so that the warmth of the hand now really feels like up close. And then the, the coolness of the background kind of recedes uh, even more. Like that might be a cool touch. But yeah, anyways. Uh, so um, in here, I, 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 I. Yeah, a little, bit, a, little, a little bit of coolness in the back. I think that's nice. It's very subtle, but... All right, so in here, um, it's very nice. You did a really good job. Uh, proportions overall, very convincing. Um, 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 um. I think it would probably help if we could see the feet, because that pose is, if we don't see them, yeah, it kind of, kind of holds up. But like, it's like that, that final curve here in the leg, and this one here kind of going like this. I think that's that's a nice touch. And also, just looking at the leg here, there's a little, there's a slight bow like this way. Pretty subtle, but like the leg goes in and kind of out again. Very slightly. I think it helps sell the, like how grounded and like, boom, not in motion she is. And uh, overall, I think the um, like the torso is a little short, but I think it's mostly in this area. I don't think you, there's much to do up here. Instead, more like this here should be a little lower. Lower that crotch, <clears throat> just so that you have enough space to have your hips, your hip bones. Your obliques right on top of that. The abdominal group kind of ending up a little lower here. Uh, past the belly button, there's enough, there's enough distance usually. If I bring my trusted assistant once again, you know, like belly button here, you can't see anything. Come on, belly button, and then there's there's all of this, you know, all of this space still down there to go. It's about the same height as you know the top six, top six abs. Maybe a little, a little less, but <laughs> what this to say? You can extend that a little bit, a little bit further down. So that this distance, that distance, and similar, and uh, make sure that there's still some space left for the pubis. Uh, now in here, uh, I, maybe you did, I don't know, but uh, when drawing the the like the rib cage, for example, like the the big shapes, try to treat treat them as as the big shapes that they are really, like uh, for here, like the rib cage, big big egg shape. And splitting that in half, like always start with the, the simplest form and then kind of chop that up into something that's a little bit more intricate. So if we did the same thing here, the ribs. It's pretty close, but you know, like this one here would, wouldn't stand out as much maybe. That one would go a little bit lower uh, if this is the, the egg shape that she's, that matches her position. The neck here making sure that it plops right into the center um so i'm saying this mostly for the the outline here that you that you ended up with the outline of her of her torso these lines here and uh because also yeah like this one on the like on the right side you know it feels like there's more of a distance here than there is on the left side and 
usually that's easier to spot when you start with a big with a big shape here that you just that you just break down. Okay, so that's what you did. All right, well. <laughs> well then, I don't know what happened. Um... <laughs> Maybe the egg shape was was slightly tilted to the to one side or the other. Uh... It's really small stuff. Like, really, really like what you did here. How everything is nice and centered. The tor the, the the neck and the shoulders at equal distance. So, and how you how you don't have too much detail in here. Kept it to the to the essential. It's just yeah, you just want the hips to be a little longer. I'll have a little bit more space there. Like pull the pull the the the, the crotch down a bit. And uh, just slightly adjusting kind of how that that leg sticks out. Oops. How this leg sticks out here, so that it's more like a, like a hip lock instead of her in between a hip lock and like in between a zip lock, between a hip lock and a almost like taking a step when you have like the leg um, hyper extended this way. There's really like it's there's no questions. She's not going anywhere. That's bending the other way. Um, so, anyways, so yeah, a little bit, a little bit of a, an issue around here, but overall, very, very solid. Um, I look at the hands; the hands feel a little, a little small, a little sausagey. <laughs> uh, tip of the fingers, you know, always, always smaller. So, bottom, middle, tip—that's exaggerated, but uh, but that's that's kind of what it is. So, so a little longer. It's almost like you're missing a segment in here. So I just have the tip of those fingers. A little more... A little pointier. And then suddenly that works works a lot better. That hand looks good though. That one nicely, nicely done. Yeah, when you draw the shoulders, like I would have those those spheres like visible at all times. These spheres are really, they're they're construction lines, yes, but also they, like in my construction, for example, I always keep them. Like the outline is always almost perfect, and so depending on like how you orient those those ellipses, like this one's slightly tilted on the outside. This one feels like it's going down a little bit, a little bit more. So depending on the, the angle of your, your elbow, uh, they're going to be really, really good at just shaping up your silhouette. And then you just have to kind of cl uh, close the line here, from clavicle, uh, uh, yeah, clavicles into the shoulder, clavicle into the shoulder, continue that line, end up here, and then you can have the rest of your arm. Um, so I'd focus more on on those construction lines, making sure that those are always kind of in your head when you when you look at these. Uh, but you did, yeah, you did a really good job here. Yeah, <laughs> I was gonna say she's, she's about to snap her fingers. Really, really nice. Um, I think she's on the dance floor. <laughs> good stuff, Lax. Really nice. Those, for everybody else, those are the kind of references to, uh, to use. Perfect. Not crazy complicated, not too much foreshortening. You can get to that, you know, much later if you ever need to, but... Uh, but, uh, well, I'll say, most professionals, you know, sure. Most of them are able to, to draw, like, simple bodies like this, you know, just from imagination. But those, those crazy poses, you know, we love foreshortening, like something like this, for example they all use references and so you can practice it but you know don't practice it as a as something like um with the with the idea that eventually you'll be able to draw anything from any angle even professionals always use help for these these more crazy crazy poses so get good at the basic poses those that you'll be drawing most of the time the rest keep that for later
Luke, I polished up the illustration I submitted last week, taking into account everything that I've studied up until now. Using your feedback, I adjusted the pose of my character slightly, bending the arms slightly to emphasize the weight of her leaning forward. I also raised the ground beneath the bench, so the seat doesn't seem too high to sit on. Yeah, feels a lot better. I ended up causing a, uh, it ended up causing a side effect of the station itself being slightly inclined uphill. But I like the result. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Here, I <coughs> see that. Ooh, was that here last time? That's nice. Super creepy for some reason. I love it. Um, I added color as well as the as well as adjusted the lighting of the scene with what you recommended composition wise, keeping the brightest and most contrasting values on the character as she's the centerpiece of the illustration. I think the composition last time gave some overly sinister tones, which was not my intention. So I've toned down the creepy flora <laughs> on the edges of the piece. Edges of the piece. Uh, the tone is meant to be an uncertain, semi-melancholic slice. Overall, I like your opinion on how this well, on how. Uh, how well this piece as a whole works uh, as an illustration, especially when content of the works. Alright, yeah, I mean, ugh, that was good. Definitely a lot less creepy. A lot more, like, the warm light just helps to warm things up. <laughs> I mean, this is still kind of creepy. But I love it, you know, the fact that it's kind of blurry, you really feel the, the humidity in the air. Uh, Yeah, that's nice. No, that's good. So simple, too. Just like a simple shape, simple shadow. Very nice. Um, so you're asking about, you know, how this compares to like a, a more professional piece, maybe. A little bit in your your treatment of the of the lights, you know, for example, like your shirts. Um, maybe it would be this bright under the sun, but but usually like fabrics and like things that are not not particularly shiny under a lamp post light, you know, something that doesn't generate that much that much light uh, won't get that light. So, I mean, you'll still be able to tell there's a big difference between the lights, the highlights and the shadows, but um, for a shirt like this, that's what, like, dark, dark green, maybe, something like that? Uh, your highlight might be more something like, like this instead. Even that maybe is a little, a little bright. Let me use a darken. Maybe even darker than that. Maybe even darker than that. But uh, it's going to be the contrast. I think the contrast is a little too much in the, between the character and, and the background now. So I would either like tone her down quite a bit uh or bring up or maybe and bring up the the overall values for the environment itself so let's try that Like I would start off from something like this and then and then add darkness where it really needs where it really needs it. So like uh, like under here, yeah, that's probably a good good spot to add more. Uh, up here, like in a close close up shot of these blades of grass, maybe a little bit more. Under the seat, maybe a little bit more. In the back there, in the corners, in between. A little 
this. Uh, here maybe, and her folds and the armpits. Um, but I would like kind of locally bring back the bring back some of those those darker, like more like ambient occlusion uh, areas of of darkness. Let me make a different. Let me save that in a separate layer. So that it can read from this distance as almost as well. Like here, you start to lose a lot of the a lot of the information in the shadows. It's kind of gone. The character really stands out. So it's just toning that down. Just, just small adjustments. But um, but values here, I think you're gonna play the biggest the biggest part. And here maybe the so the. the the part that's closer to the, closest to the light, maybe you can warm that up a little bit more. Because light again equals saturation. Yeah, focusing on <laughs> focusing on visibility for the most part, especially for dark scenes like this. Like those those darker areas are important. Like this kind of stuff here, like in the corners, like you'll want to go real dark there, but um, but not overall. Like really localized where it's needed, and everything else. Like try to keep it as light as possible, as possible. Um, so that we can see as much of the of the stuff that you painted as possible, <laughs> if possible. <laughs> um, and then when it comes to uh, yeah, so see so you guys talking about like the softness. Yeah, that's that's a little a little thing, also a little detail that I think we could add here. Uh, softness overall, good. You know, I would always recommend that you start from that. But after that, depending on the focus, depending on where you want the, the eyes to really like, uh, you know, kind of lock on, you can add, you can turn up like the definition, turn on to H HD kind of thing. So in here, like on the shoulders, maybe you want to like real nice, sharp, no fuzziness here. Same thing with the hair, maybe some of these are nice and sharp. It doesn't have to be too much, but Try to remove some of the fuzziness just around the leg also it feels like you know almost like like she's uh like disintegrating a little bit like she's made out of dust you could go a little bit a little bit sharper here as well Feet in here, no problem. With the tip of the shoe there, it's just nice and sharp. Same thing with the umbrella. Like that's close enough that it would be it would be in focus, and we wouldn't necessarily have any fuzziness there. Wouldn't make wouldn't make sense. So here are the details of the umbrella itself different folds could go a little a little sharper there um, and yeah so same idea with her face like her face pretty pretty white um, just like we did with the shirt kind of toning down the overall overall level of brightness still can be very bright but uh, but lowering the contrast just a little
that kind of stuff, kind of overall. She's got, yeah, she's got a small head uh, for her body, so I mean, maybe you could make make that a little longer this way. Um, maybe that's more like a style choice, but uh, the biggest issue here is definitely those uh, adjusting those colors, the adjusting those values, and then sharpening up some of the details to to really lock make help the eyes of the viewer kind of lock onto certain areas. Because when it's fuzzy, you kind of it's easier to kind of move uh, move along and look at something else. But when it's sharp just like you know like a just like an hd image it makes makes everything more just more interesting to look at and so we want to to stay there and and check it out a little longer let's try to make the head a little bigger the face rather yeah what the hell Luke? It's subtle. It's really good, but uh, like you're almost <coughs> you're almost playing against yourself, you know, by by darkening too much, where we can see all those details that you that you painted. They're still there. Just revealing those a little bit more. Still very nice. Robin, what's up? Ooh. <clears throat> uh, 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 hope you're well too. So today I wanted to ask you for some general art advice. I looked at some older pieces that I did in 3D and some landscape that I painted not long ago after I got into 2D art. Today I can generally tell that um, I can can tell how these paintings could be improved. Uh, there are a few of them that I think are still quite nice. I remember that I had put a lot, a ton of time into every painting from that period, and I put in less time. And when I put it last time, it mostly turned out like the mage at the bottom. <laughs> now I wonder what you think is the better practice: make a lot of very shitty art. Well, that's probably not it. Uh, and do many iterations, or be make one really good and make one piece really good and just spend a lot of time looking at it and trying to spot mistakes. I have the feeling that I had really poor fundamentals at the time, but I could generally spot the few mistakes every time I came back to a painting with a fresh eye. I could slowly iterate my way to a relatively good piece and end up with something that I was really proud of, but it took a lot of time and I'm not sure if it's super useful for the learning speed. Sometimes it's more difficult and I can't really grasp what's wrong with a painting, but I think M was quite sensitive to when something looked off. <laughs> Did you do this? That looks hella cool. Um, beautiful piece, this thing. Could be, could be professional concept art piece. Um, do the only that really good too. Well, I certainly like your colors much better in 2D uh, versus 3D. That's a nice environment. Well, uh, so to answer your question, you know, whenever something takes you too much time, I think the best answer would be that it's probably something that's, uh, that's a little overwhelming because in art, you know, to make the, the best amount of progress, and I guess it's similar to, um, Similar to like, I don't know if I can compare it to like coding, for example, but uh, it's like coding first, 
when you're learning like a smaller app, you know, something that, do that doesn't have too many functions versus trying to code right off the right off the bat, like a full game. You might be able to do both. It's just that for the full game, you'll have to to learn a lot of stuff along the way and add as a, as a result, that's going to you know make the, the whole process much, much, much longer versus if you already had the knowledge and you were just executing, right? So you want to find a sweet spot where things are challenging, but not overwhelming, where you feel mostly comfortable for it, for uh, attempting, you know, whatever it is that you're attempting, but still leaving, leaving uh, enough space for, for things that, that you don't know, so that there's a little bit of a room to grow there, a room to, to improve. So I don't know that there's like a clear ratio, but from what I've been doing for the most part, most of my, most of my time as an artist, most of my life rather, uh, is approaching things where I am mostly comfortable. So like 50% plus, like, I don't know, like 60, 70% within my comfort zone and then leaving the rest up for, um, for learning. Um, it's when you do the opposite that you start to struggle a little bit more and then takes uh, things take forever and you don't feel like you're making a lot of progress. You feel like, oh man, I've been on this piece for like weeks, months, maybe. Um, and I can always find new things and it, it's normal, right? As you get better doing other stuff, as you as you observe, as you as you go about your day, looking at things, observing things, you get better, like your eye gets better. And then when you come back a little bit later, you can spot new things that, that are wrong. And like, oh, I didn't spot that before. That's wrong. I mean, you can fix it. Um, but that's, I feel, uh, maybe not the best way to approach it. So that would be my answer. Like find the sweet spot where you're tackling something that's mostly, that feels mostly comfortable. Like here, I'm guessing the reason why you're able to get something that's this badass looking uh, is in part because you use 3D. So you already started with something that felt that felt comfortable. You already um, had a lot of the work kind of done within your comfort zone, and then the rest was was something else, something new that you learned. I don't know how long this took you, uh, but I can bet you that I would get I would bet a lot of money that this would have taken you a ton longer if you didn't have 3D to help you. Um, So yeah, uh, it's kind of an in between, you know, of those two. Don't don't do something don't do something that's shitty, uh, but in in great quantities. Yeah, you don't want more turds. Uh, you still end up with turds, but at the same time, you don't want to just have one good piece that takes you forever, and, and for which you struggle a lot, and you have to. Uh, yeah, for which you have to struggle a lot, essentially. You want to find something that's right in between, something that you feel mostly comfortable, so it doesn't feel too overwhelming, and at the same time, leaving yourself enough space to learn in the process. I've been repeating the same thing. I hope that makes sense. But uh, but tell me more about the. Oops. Tell me more about what the hell is going on? <laughs> Stop it! What are you doing, Photoshop? Tell me more about this one. How long did it take you? Was that one of those that took forever? Is that a recent one? Cause that's that's hot. Moving on to Jade, uh, to Jad. So Jad, I am tackling the perspective two assignments at the moment. Before getting too far, I'd like to know if this composition is okay because this void at the top right makes me unsure. Ooh, that's a cool building. I like those shapes. That looks nice. Um, void at the top right, like here. What you could do um, is add a bunch of clouds, but but build the clouds just like you would build those buildings. You know, so you can start like simple. Uh, where's the vanishing point here? Uh, hmm. Because yes, right now it is it is kind of bare. <clears throat> but 
but you could easily fill that up. Some cool stylized clouds. Oh my god. I'm gonna start like Minecraft style. Just black for now. Just basic blocks. shade them properly depending on the on your light source so if the light's coming from from here maybe then those clouds will be lit from that side and you can you know you can quickly fill up that scene clouds are the the most obvious thing to add in the sky I and mean, what else you're gonna add especially from a shot like this where even if you had like mountains in the back which you do uh, there's still a limit to how, how tall they can be especially when they're really far away so i mean could have like a planet here, like or like a big moon, but clouds are usually the the easiest, and then it can actually really add to the to the composition here, make this even more epic, because uh, you have like more and more as you go away here, frequency increases. Um, just a suggestion. Also, I'll add a character later, but I don't know how uh, how sized it has to be. The three tests convey different feelings, but are they correct in terms of scale with the background? Well, we can find out like what a person back here would look like up here and then even closer to that a uh, little a little tricky error but uh, let's see That's gonna... not, the, not the easiest to figure out where's the center of Person, if she were to take the elevator down, beep, 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 ding, ding, and then come all the way here, that would be the line that she or he walks on. And now to figure out like how tall that would be down here, like we would have to do the same thing that you probably did to to measure the distance between all of these. I'm not gonna do that. That's gonna take too long. But uh, essentially starting with the size of one of these, maybe something like that. Doing the good old trick, figuring out where the center is, having that line cross, and then you go like, doing, 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 doing. and that's going to give you a particular height. And then you do the same thing to bring it forward. <laughs> um, actually, you don't need to. You can just trace the line there. So, eyeballing it, you know. Let's just do that for now. That would seem approximately okay. So a person that's this tall back there would be about this tall at this, uh, like right next to this pillar. I want to find out what they would be even closer to us, like up here maybe. Maybe like this tall. And if you have something in the foreground, like another element where they're on top and they're even closer, then it can be whatever you want. But as long as it's bigger than this, you'll be good. Just don't want to be 
you just don't want them to be taller or shorter than uh, than the perspective at like ground level. Uh, so like if it were me, like I probably wouldn't calculate that's too much work. And as long as it's close enough, nobody will ever ever question it. So, so doing something like that it should be should be enough to figure out the scale of, of a person. And that's the most important. You just want to find find out like what a person like this would be like. How tall they would be like. Back, uh, even further back in here. So if they were to stand in that little, that little window there, they might be this tall. Actually, yeah, no, scratch that. I'm, I'm stupid. That, you don't need to do any of this. That's way too long. You just gotta continue that line from here to the foreground. That's gonna be way faster. And then have that one meet right there. Then you get a much better idea. Mm, no, you have to do this. <laughs> oh boy, it shows that this year has been going on for a while. My brain has given up. <clears throat> Scratch the last thing. The last thing I said. I think you'll still have to measure it. Um, it's just for the depth, you don't have to, but the height, you kind of have to. <laughs> Um, <clears throat> it really depends. You know what you want to do uh, when it comes to the composition now? What the focus um, should be on is the, the building the most important part? Is the, the character the most important? Because right now the focus is, is mostly on the character, less on the building. In here, it's about the same thing, but you kind of lose the the, the, the grandioseness of, of the building by, by hiding part part of it. So I'm not a fan of this one as much. Uh, those two look pretty good. Yeah, I don't know. If you want to have a character in here, because if the character is this small, you don't have to worry too much about it. It's going to be just a, a big environment environment piece. Um, this looks awesome as it is. Uh, you know, you don't necessarily need a character in here. It looks epic. It's already a lot of work just to finish that. So it's kind of how how much time you want to invest in here. If you draw a character, that's going to be like a lot, a lot more hours uh, that you need to invest. The lazy part of me would just go with that because that looks, that looks cool. Uh, having those characters here just sells the, the the epicness of the buildings even more. Like if this is this big, like what the hell is that one? Um, yeah, and it it's interesting enough that it kind of holds up on its own. So. <sighs> Did it, Michael? What's up? Hello, March. I hope you are doing great. So there's, uh, so here's another commission from Fiverr. Seems like people like my storyboard illustrations more than my character character concept. <coughs> so I decided to focus on that direction professionally. Nice. Uh, any tip or something that can help me with that? I also want your feedback on those frames. Uh, you're welcome, John. Um, the first one is not yet finished. Just added some flat colors. Do you think that my frames are interesting enough? or need to play more with perspective, maybe. Uh, I'm guessing there's no... <coughs> I was gonna say, I'm guessing there's no continuity between those, those, those six, but is there? Like this to this, or this to this to this, and then this to this to this, or this way. I 
and uh this looks good this dude that's really cool um So I don't know that they are related or not. I'm just gonna go with the assumption that maybe they aren't. So I'm just gonna treat them like one by one, not considering that there needs to be any continuity continuity uh, between those. That looks very nice. Um, when taking those shots, you know, just like a just like a photographer uh, or just like a director of photography for for film or something, you want to make the shot that will sell the the mood right that you that you want to go for so and here uh depending on the angle depending on just like how how tall the viewer is are we looking at this this angel from below are we looking at him from above it looks like we're looking at him from from below slightly uh, how much do you want that effect to be present here uh, if he's like this very imposing figure, then uh, you might want to increase the the perspective even more, like the foreshortening even more. If not, if he's more like a friendly, kind of a almost human level in terms of hierarchy, then that looks fine. You know, he's just maybe a little taller, so he is imposing, but but not dominating. Uh, but if he were, you know, if he were like a, like this crazy god, that's super important. Then you might go that that's that doesn't work obviously but um you might want to go for like a crazy perspective something like this like we're at his feet we're so small that we're looking and we have to completely look up otherwise we can't see it see the whole thing see him as a whole um so those kinds of questions very like very important when it comes to storyboard uh what are you trying to convey in the shot what's most important and trying to, to feature that <coughs> as best as possible. Um, and here, what I'm getting from this is uh, that you're trying to sell the, uh, the, 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 the scale of the, of the environment, like just how big it is, how vast it is, almost goes to, to the horizon. Like it's just so small, it's so far in comparison to where we stand. It's like, it's a long way there. Um, that's what it conveys to me. Like if you want something that, if you want to to show the environment as a as something that's more uh, more cozy and stuff like that, then you wouldn't go for something like this. For example, you do the opposite. Make it feel like it's a lot closer. Like all of these things are a lot closer. Everything is more cramped, more uh, more accessible. When you put things in in a in a far distance like this again makes it makes it feel less attainable less uh, more out of reach uh, but these these shots here the first three very very nice uh, this one here mm. Maybe, maybe you could need a little more context, like, uh, cause I'm not sure what I'm looking at right now. I'm guessing it's like a, like a, an, <laughs> an angel grocery store kind of thing. And then you, you can buy different things, uh, like these things. But is it just like you go in there and you, you just grab whatever you want? Or is there somebody at the counters back here that are, you know, like charging you for this stuff? So maybe maybe like zooming out a little bit so that we can see a little, a little more of the the choices that there there are and maybe the difference between between all of them and um, mm. like if something back here is important it's not it's not bad but uh yeah i think without the context it's a little hard for me to to point out which which direction you should go so i'll kind of leave it at that um, for this one here, uh, 
maybe having like a somebody interacting with that like maybe he's trying to to pick it up and grab it and kind of look and then we see we see something on it like he's interested in that one and kind of picking it up and, and checking it out uh, so that could be like from his perspective like where the camera is like behind his eyes and we're the character kind of interacting with this so maybe like a, a view a little more from above and then the hand kind of going like oh that's an interesting thing Or not, but again, it really depends on what you're trying to convey here. So those are harder to uh, harder to give feedback to. This one here. <laughs> I would have a shot maybe like this if there was something back here that's that's important. Otherwise it kind of leaves a lot of space unused. So if you had like somebody coming like coming from behind into the scene, like, hey, 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 stranger, you need help, then maybe that would make sense. But otherwise, uh, maybe like an even more uh, closer shot, like something more like this, to show like really the emotions, like in the eyes, uh, like what she feels about this is going to allow you to, to have a little bit more details and that kind of stuff. But, um, but yeah, again, it's hard to give feedback to without the context. I, uh, 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 I hope that helps still. And uh, yeah, when it comes to the storyboard, uh, storyboard's all about, <coughs> all about, <laughs> all about storytelling, right? It's in the name. So you have to be good at like to practice that kind of stuff look at uh, at comics uh that's a good one like like uh, comic books manga um uh, look at try to find as many storyboard artists as you as you can and try to look at their portfolios obviously that's going to be a good uh, good source of inspiration too and uh good source of knowledge but uh be yeah, a good good storyboards are not going to need as nearly as much detail as this so you could you could make a lot more money by investing less into each each of these uh each of these little panels but but selling the idea a little more a little quicker like putting the emphasis on really what's important and kind of ignoring the details um because if i remember like uh, for example like the storyboards that we would see uh when they would release or well, not when they would release but when they would preview like a cinematics of blizzard for example like for the games that i was working on um they would, the, the 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 storyboards would be very rough, you know, and they would make a video out of them, one after the other, and so we could we could see kind of like the tempo and like get an idea, better idea of the story, uh, and it was extremely rough, like way more rough than this, not nearly as many details, uh, but still it conveyed the action really well, conveyed the story, conveyed the emotion. So keep that in mind. I think there's this. A lot of a lot of room here to just simplify things and make it make the process faster so that you can make more money <coughs> time is money <clears throat> all right sam uh no worries i'm sorry about not not getting it like clearly other people in the stream <laughs> understood i'm just the i'm just the idiot <clears throat> so unfortunately I didn't manage to finish my current project yet, but so far I've taken your advice to heart and made the legs longer and the outlines much thicker. I also moved the arms so that the back is more... I'm missing a few... something here. So the back is empty. I wanted to put the old and new pictures next to each other. I'd like to know if I'm still repeating mistakes or have bad habits which I haven't changed, I'm guessing. Uh, and of course, if something seems off in the new pic, feel free to point it out. All right, so that was yours. That's a new one. Got it. Crystal clear. And my 
different voices at its limit. Um, I still feel like the legs are a little, short, a little too short. So especially with the foreshortening that you have here, um, you know, if you had like a <clears throat> just a character standing, that's the crutch right here, right down the middle. Uh, if you had done the same character, but foreshortened quite a bit, um, that halfway point would be much higher, like probably something like, like here instead. Um, actually, let's find out. Corners, X marks, so even higher. I was slightly off. <clears throat> and so if that was the, the length of the legs before, when there's no foreshortening, now the legs are this long and the torso is this long. So, or this short, I should say. So yeah, in here, feels like there is a good amount of foreshortening, like we can see just based off of the, the cylinders here that you have for the legs. And we're looking at those cylinders from, from below, comfortably from below. So you would have that effect a lot more present, a lot more obvious in uh, the legs of your character, so. That, <laughs> let's not do that. <laughs> <clears throat> Excuse me. Am I running out of tea? Oh no. Nothing in here. No, it's just over there. Yeah, it's so bis bitsy. There's <laughs> so much ginger in there. Ooh. <clears throat> Spicy. So that leg here. Knee maybe there. No, that's too much. Knee, maybe here. Like, without considering the pose at all. Like, that would feel a little bit more natural. Like, the length of things, at least. Um, for this character, so what was it before? So yeah, too short still. Um, when you're increasing the difficulty here, like this one didn't didn't have too much too much foreshortening going on, a little bit, you know, in the upper torso, but in the torso, but not not that much. In uh, here definitely have more. So longer legs and I feel also like the the rest could be higher. Because those would attach, oh you have your shoulders somewhere around here. Chests. And they're supported too, so yeah, they would probably be a little, a little higher here, and uh, the cleavage would probably overlap a lot of the details behind it. So like part of this, like the top of the, the top of the torso, probably would probably be, be it would probably be covered by uh, by by those a little bit more. Again, pushing the uh, the foreshortening a little bit more, like like this one here actually. Yeah, and those legs definitely a little bit, a little longer, more slender to match the foreshortening. And I don't know, is the cape, is the cape like a cone or in the back does it go like this? So if from the front, it's a cape like this, you know, like, that's the neck, the head. Uh, is it like this or is it like that? If it's not like, if it's not like this, if it's just straight at the bottom, um, and you're looking at it from this angle, from below, it's the same as you know, looking at like a, a big cone like that. That's open in the center. That's gonna be your cape. Uh, the bottom would look more like this. It would be curved, but not upwards. It'd be curved downwards. If there is like a little little bit of motion in here, that can shift. 
but it, uh, it would be unlikely that it would shift so much as to completely flip and curve upwards instead. Maybe flip enough that it's kind of flat. You know, if you have like enough movement in here. Uh, maybe, maybe would curve this much, but it feels like you're missing a little bit of fabric here. Like, where's all that length gone? That's the waist here. You have all that length right here. Where is that? Where is that gone in the back there? Like you would need to probably have something up, up there to compensate for that, like a big fold. Uh, either that or just lower it here on the inside. So that you don't lose too much of its mass and it doesn't mysteriously disappears. mysteriously disappear rather but um for a pose like this um actually for any kind of pose use a reference so i don't know what reference you use for this if you use one but uh if you haven't i would definitely try to find one so either you could just bring the magic poser here once again place on a cool pose yeah and uh Place that in position, the cool, like a pose that you like, or just find like a photo reference or whatever, and, uh, and use that as a reference. Here, the only problem is that there's not a whole lot of, a uh, whole lot of foreshortening going on, but uh, if you get close enough, maybe. Hmm. Yeah, it's not great for foreshortening, but it's still, it's still something, at least for the, the pose gonna be on point. Or if there's like another, yeah, another website that you can find where you can deform stuff in perspective. Uh, I think you would need, you would need it here because the body does look a little weird because of it. Moving on to Kevin. What's up, Kevin? This week I posted some figure practice and a personal piece I'm working on. It's a demonic Sith Lord. How are these? Uh, what do I need to improve? And uh, what do you think I'm ready to move? And do you think that I'm ready to move on? What do you think I'm ready to move on to? I really need to start on the perspective classes, so I post more. Uh, so I post more of them. I'm also trying to figure out which hand style I want for my Sith guy. I'll see each hand is different, which would work better. <laughs> Ooh, that's. Nice instruction. And uh, unsurprisingly, ended up in a nice study. When the foundation is good, the details usually follow. And really good. Those are uh, oh, these nice perspective on here. Something behind in front. You got nice overlap in your shapes and your volumes. Hell yeah. So these guys. <laughs> hmm. Mm -mm -mm -mm. I feel like this one is just more aesthetic. It looks looks nicer. Um, but if you were able to like have like a creepy pose, you know, like something like this. Uh, with those those longer like more spider-like fingers that might be cool too it's just trickier but um uh, i would still like fatten up the fingers so like maybe given like a bigger hand but like thick and like uh thick fingers instead of having these these long like weak looking fingers maybe it's more like a knuckle and then other knuckle and then tip of it and then like, you know, each finger is kind of like this big, it's like a claw instead. Uh, then, then yeah, totally. That could, that could be super cool. Um, and that would definitely look pretty menacing. But, uh, but as it is now, the, the gesture in here, the, the proportions, everything just looks more aesthetic. 
I would I would go with that based on what you have here. Um, <laughs> and I would do uh, for the uh, for the the legs in the back. I would probably like vary the. Um, Recommend that you recommend that you vary this the thickness of the different sections, the different um, section of the limb, so where it kind of sticks out from his body, kind of like his shoulder, right? The shoulder's bigger than a bicep, and the forearm usually a lot smaller, and the wrist pretty small in comparison. So big to small. Um, so kind of what you did here, but maybe even more so than that. So that's big limb here get smaller and smaller and like really small towards the end the only reason i'm saying this is uh when you have something like a small like a straw leg like that leg for example yeah it's it, it's hard mechanically to imagine this moving at all uh it's just too much mass and like the muscles wouldn't have enough enough leverage to to make that work when you can have bigger muscles because the, the structure is bigger um, at the origin and then the, the farther away you go from it, you know, the, 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 the bones themselves become smaller, the muscles become smaller, it becomes less heavy, more, more easy to manage. Uh, like this kind of, this kind of ratio would make more sense. You know, pretty thick, pretty thick here and then it gets smaller and smaller and smaller. That could easily, easily move with muscles. It's just like when it's too long like that one, a little harder to imagine. Look at the look at like uh, maybe uh, really big spiders, although they don't have to deal with the the gravity as much as as a bigger creature. Mm. Biggest spider. What am I gonna find here? Oh jeez. Like this I guess but you know a little fatter so even more of a tapering down effect yeah these spiders are not big enough they're not helping me make my point <laughs> go away spider be gone <coughs> <clears throat> but um Gravity is more of a is more is more of a thing when you're bigger, and so you need to have to have that. That's why you know if you if you toss like a tiny spider on this on the twentieth floor, it's gonna land no problem because it does it doesn't have the same same the same concerns uh, when it comes to gravity. Uh, the air for them for for anything that's smaller, the air feels thicker, and so you don't have to to worry about that too much. But for anything that's big like human sized. That becomes more more of a visual concern when when it's too narrow, when it's too long. It's just the leverage question becomes like, mm, it's not gonna be possible. But that's the only thing, my only gripe with this guy. Otherwise, it's super cool. Uh, well constructed. Just like these these studies here. Hell yeah, dude. Did you draw this from uh, from imagination? Or was it from reference? Because looking at yours, um, looking at your constructions here, I'm guessing it was from imagination. Because I mean, you could probably pull it off. Because these are really solid. They're consistent. You know the the length of your cylinders doesn't vary a whole lot every time. Um, so developing a good eye for the different different proportions. Um, very nice. Really looking forward to see. 
how this guy, how this guy turns in. Right on. So kind of like, uh, kind of like what I was um, recommending to, I forgot, but not long ago. Okay, cool. So the legs from imagination, top, all right. Yeah, do do more of that. Like try to uh, try to challenge yourself by, because because those are good enough. I think I mean you'll 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 probably struggle a little bit, you know, to to draw these from imagination. But I would try it once in a while, like every few studies that you do like this. Try one that's just nothing too complicated. Like don't try something like that. That's crazy. Uh, but um, but something that's some some guy that's stunning. You know, maybe something like this. Not this, but something like that and see how well you can do it on your own without without any reference. Still like thinking back at all the references that you used previously, using that as kind of like source material. But uh, yeah, trying to trying to, to flap those wings. Like at this point, the construction is really good when uh, when using reference. So it's the whole point of the construction is that you can eventually draw them from imagination, right? Because their constructions, they're they're simple, way more simple than this. You know, it's just a bunch of cylinders, rib cage, like a, just an egg that that's carved out a box. So the challenge now is to draw this from imagination as best as possible and get it to look just like it is now from reference but from imagination so kind of like i said try to introduce uh, some challenges and challenges in between that uh, in between those studies where you you go at it on your own without looking at reference Jarrett, the last one. Well, <laughs> seven hours and a half already. Oh, I'm getting slower with my feedback. Used to be able to do like almost 50 and at <clears throat> the same time. Uh oh. Well, I guess it's good for you guys. Um, so what's up, Jared? So uh, I've been really good. Hope you've been good too. I've been. It's been a while since I've last submitted an assignment. I've struggled with both motivation and procrastination these past two weeks on creating a scene in three-point perspective. I've been wanting to focus on the characters more, but I know learning perspective first is going to make things much easier in the future, such as posing characters in dynamic way. Yes. I'm currently working on this castle scene, and I'm experiencing creative block. Creative block. I'm not sure what I could add to further enhance the scene. What do you recommend I do? Back on. <coughs> Ooh. That's cool. Um, being able to see more of the inside here, of the castle. Like a better window inside the inside the building. Mm, that's a nice touch. What if uh, you turn this into Like um, like a little market, <clears throat> you know, like it's open, open to the peasants, open, open to the commoners, and uh, and the merchants, and then you can kind of walk in into the castle. Maybe there's like some nothing too crazy, you know, but like some simple stands here, where they they sell a bunch of stuff. Maybe like Star Star Wars style, bunch of weird fruits, bunch of weird devices. Or, 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 or. Hmm, what could you do here? The easiest, you know, it's always to find a theme. 
something that um, that you like, like a uh, one of your one of your interests. So I I love that you know I love the like the Star Wars level of tech. So so kind of low tech, but in the future, kind of funny um, how it hasn't developed that much. And um, I like the, the the look of it, kind of like a little retro. Uh, so yeah, just theme it up with something like that and turn it into sure right now it's kind of like a it's a castle wall but uh but what's the purpose of the castle like uh, like i was su suggesting at the beginning you know um often back in the days back back in the days like in medieval times uh they would you know like allow merchants in here to set up shop and so that people can, can come and buy buy stuff uh maybe it's a maybe it's like an abandoned building and they're they're uh like the, the whole castle kind of run down maybe it's been built many many thousand years ago and it's still kind of standing so everything's going to be a little a little a little busted and uh maybe you have some some black market uh shop um uh what's the word uh, uh, uh. shop owners some black market, black market little shop, uh, little stands here, selling you know weird weird devices, or maybe some uh, some some poor some poor people, kind of you know begging for money on the side here, and this guy's walking in like super rich or something, uh, or maybe it's a a horror dungeon, not dungeon, but like a like a tyrant's castle and like you have a bunch of bunch of people hanging here. I don't know why my idea is all, <laughs> all super macabre, but uh, but yeah, like finding a theme I think is the, is the easiest way. It just drives a lot of the decisions for you. Um, could be something a little bit more, a little bit more upbeat, like a, I don't know, it's like a circus is in town, it's like festival week. And uh, there's a bunch of uh, bunch of little how do you call these like the little things that are hanging. Then you have a bunch of those everywhere. Uh, again, stands you know in a castle. What else are you gonna have? You're gonna set up set up shop outside and have little stands uh, for for snacks maybe or for little games. Um, maybe like some performers in there. You could have a. Uh, 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 some more details on the side of the wall here. Maybe, maybe this is a little closer, and you can see like uh, I don't know, like maybe some some bridges sticking out here. I don't know. It's uh, ideas. You know, generating ideas is is a skill. So so try to work on it. Uh, look at a bunch of different images to give you to to give you inspiration. So let's see. Uh, Maybe it's like a a, a wizard's um, guild's hangout kind of thing. So you're gonna have a bunch of wizardry sh <laughs> wizardry things, uh, some like colorful uh, colorful um, flags and you know, little magic shops like where they sell grimoires and and magic books and staffs and potions and stuff like that. Mm. Or maybe it's a Maybe it's full of like monsters in here. Yeah, like these little like that's kind of what I'm uh, thinking about. You know, like these little little stores on the side, uh, kind of beat up looking, but uh, you know selling cool stuff. Wood structures mixed in with um, with the bricks, always cool looking. So a bunch of uh, yeah, like a bunch of kind of beat up wooden structure that were put together pretty quickly. But anyways, when it comes to the, you know, to the actual construction here, everything looks pretty good. Cylinders are good. Big pillar. Uh, everything that's in here seems to be following the right perspective. So construction wise, you're on the right path, you know, now it's just to, to decorate that decorate that thing so I don't know uh, like like I said I am at the end of the stream so my <laughs> my brain is kind of running 
kind of shutting down. So maybe not the most creative I've ever been, but a uh, few ideas at least. Um, but yeah, look up references, look up uh, look up uh, movies, you know, that, that you liked and see kind of what, what kind of stuff they had in their buildings. Uh, this is a castle, but I mean, you can turn this into literally any kind of building. It doesn't need to be castle. Um, it could be somebody's, somebody's house. It could be uh, like a headquarters for, for a company, for a guild, for a, a gang of ogres. Uh, it could be, and like this guy's kind of walking in like, hi, and it's just a bunch of monsters in here. Um, and like, how would these people decorate the place? How would they trash the place? What kind of what kind of stuff would they leave around that that's useful? Maybe there's a bunch of armors laying all over the place. Um, maybe maybe they they're all about you know representing their their colors, their flags, their their uh, yeah like their guild colors. Maybe maybe they painted the castle weird. Uh, so many so many options. I'll let you take it from here. Hope that helps. And uh, we're gonna stop for today. Almost at eight hours. That's a, a good stream. Uh, thankfully, my voice lasted until the end. I can tell already wasn't nearly as bad as last week. So, so uh, hopefully by next week, it should be mostly gone, this damn cough. Um, so yeah, apologies for, for coughing left and right. I uh, try my best and I uh, uh, hope the feedback was helpful. I hope uh, that even if you didn't submit anything, that uh, you maybe got something out of this. Once again, if you're watching this later on YouTube and you made it all the way until the end, congratulations. Uh, if you're, once again, if you want to, to learn more about the program, if you want to get your art reviewed like this every single week and find more information down in the description below. And uh, yeah, so thanks for, uh, thanks for hanging out, guys. I... <laughs> don't worry about don't worry about my voice dad but but thank you um uh, yeah hope you guys have a good rest of your weekends good creative week ahead of you had a good time today um a lot of really really cool stuff as usual a lot of progress so it's super motivating for me as well uh to keep to keep doing these so i'm happy good job you guys i'll see you next time